in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Jesus be glorified. Let's lift our voices as a family of faith and say thank you Jesus. You have done all things well and we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You are mighty. We glorify you. We glorify you. We thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for the testimonies, the sign, the acts of his wisdom. We give you praise. And pray and say father i am here again let the dew from heaven come upon my life lift your voice and pray they go from strength to strength everyone that appeared before the lord in zion they go from strength to strength wisdom to wisdom grace to grace Please keep standing. Let's just read one scripture. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you first to God. Please keep it there. Okay. I commend you to God. And then to the word of his grace. And the Bible says that word is able to, number one, build you up. Build you up. And then to give you. The inheritance is yours. But it takes understanding to be a possessor. It says that the word is able to build you up. And give you an inheritance among them who paid attention before you among them who have obtained these realities it says i commend you to two things one a person god like one would give a child to a caretaker he says and to the word of his grace i like you to pray from the depth of your heart and be serious while you are praying say father i have come to you and i have come to encounter your word it has capacity to build my life it has capacity to make me a possessor, a possessor of possibilities. Lift your voice and make sure you are praying. Lift your voice, make sure you are praying. Tonight, let your word prevail over our hearts in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From the pages of my heart, 
Let my worship begin that never ends. Sing it again. This is from the pages of my heart. Let my worship begin that never ends. To the power of all flesh. You're my God. tonight change our lives let it be an encounter in your presence in the name of Jesus let the sick be healed tonight let the oppressed be delivered grant us illumination access to light in the name of Jesus let us encounter your anointing and let it create possibilities in our lives in the name of Jesus God bless you please be seated good to be back I apologize last week um, for the first time couldn't make it for the miracle service but I want us to appreciate Pastor Jimmy alongside all the leaders that were with him it was such such a powerful time last week thank you sir God bless you thank you sirs in the name of Jesus Christ um, I welcome everyone tonight. It's a great time. Let me just quickly acknowledge the assistant chaplain of Adama State University. He's here with us. Thank you so much, sir. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Wonderful people. They are the people who make me always want to go to Adama State. I mean, they would so, so pamper you. God bless you. If you are from Adama State, make sure you be like them. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, I don't know if they are around. My dear friend told me he was going to be here. Dr. Lucas Atlong from Joss. Is he here? Oh, he's there. God bless you. And then his friend, Dr. John. Am I right? God bless you. Please, thank you. Let's honor them. Wonderful, wonderful men of God. The medical doctors also. Thank you, sir, for coming. The Lord increase you in the name of Jesus Christ prophesy to yourself and say I receive understanding say it again I receive understanding turn it into prayer Lord grant me great understanding tonight understanding the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding unto the simple hallelujah praise the Lord tonight I'm going to be touching on a number of things and then we'll pray um, as I have traveled especially in recent times I have I have been humbled let me tell you sincerely at at the prophetic words that the Lord spoke to me many years ago I have seen it in regions campuses and I am truly humbled to see that when God speaks um, he is reliable it pays to trust him it may not look like it but if you trust him he will surprise you hallelujah and I was sharing I think with our dear school of ministry students yesterday during the lectures and I was telling them that one of my personal goals in this life is to inspire my generation to love God to seek him 
and to be revealers of his possibilities this is my inspiration to my generation i hope that one day a generation will look at my life and be inspired to love god to seek him and not just to stop there that their lives will become portraits of the possibilities that a man can demonstrate if and when he's one with god are we together now and so all the teachings that we bring here are an attempt a contribution you can call it to open us up and help build that we rise to that point where we not only know god but we understand his ways it's, it's very arrogant for me to have to be the one saying this but let me tell you sincerely i love and i care about every one of you from the depth of my heart it, it shouldn't be me saying it but i say it because it's the truth it matters to me that your knowledge of god is rich it matters to me that your conformity to the fullness of all that he is and he represents is rich in your life it matters to me also that you gain intelligence spiritually that you come to a point where your life is furnished with thorough understanding you are not unfruitful in the knowledge of the truth you can know god as a person and still be unfruitful in the knowledge of the systems of the kingdom you hear me say this i will keep repeating it until it becomes your convictions because the operation of god on earth in as much as the bible has revealed to us is systemic are we together god is the god of systems when you encounter his person then he grants you the ability to understand his ways his methodology his systems the results that we seek are dependent on our comprehension and engaging of the systems accordingly are we together so on one hand we are coming into the knowledge of god intimacy here and there but then we must understand his ways listen let me tell you this our destinies the quality of our destinies on earth not only depend on the love of god for us but our ability to understand his ways of doing things are we together now to be able to replicate his reality in our environment that's the whole idea of kingdom come it's not a mystery is to be able to sustain the ability to make your life become an expression in every area every area remember there's a scripture we've been playing around with very recently the bible says second peter chapter 1 and verse 3 it says according as verse 2 says grace and peace be multiplied to you you know through the knowledge of him of our god and of our lord jesus christ verse 3 says according as his divine power hath given us how many things all things that pertain unto what apostle peter would have just stopped and said his divine power hath given us all things that would have been enough but he says those all things are divided into two categories the matters that pertain unto life and the matters that pertain unto godliness everyone say after me life godliness say one more time life godliness there are matters that pertain unto godliness for instance your spiritual growth right the the issues of the spirit when i open you up to the dimensions of the spirit the anointing understanding the ways of god digging into the boils of the spirit to be able to come up with the things that help you to conform better to become a spiritual man these are the things that pertain unto godliness but there are things that pertain unto life the well-being of your children matters that pertain unto life is that true the ability to not be under the yoke of this godless system that has designed a structure to strangle any intention to be serious with god there is a system intentionally built that's what is captured in the mystery babylon a system that was built with intelligence intended to frustrate any desire to be serious with god 
and so the system operates in many ways by making men busy by making men poor by making men mediocre by making them frustrated to lack a sense of purpose that those who are not of the world will continue to pay tribute in cash and in kind with their time and with their lives but there is a bailout system and the bible says they are matters that pertain unto life no matter how anointed you are when you watch your child being driven out of school it will frustrate your christian experience now i have said it again and again we do not serve god just because of tea and bread listen very carefully we don't serve god because of the things that he gives us we serve him because of who he is and our love for him but he has so designed in his wisdom that in serving him you encounter other things the ability to attend to the matters of life because in doing so you demonstrate that he is a good father number two in doing so you demonstrate dominion number three in doing so it affords you the time to further commit yourself are we together there is a conspiracy it's always been there but it's been reinforced again this system of satan occupying men their time their life to never allow them serve god do you know why many of the people we call god's generals were powerful they gave god time that is the commodity that satan is fighting today in our generation time you never know anything without giving it time you meet a fulani man he can whisper something to his cows and they will behave themselves because he spends time with them you don't wake up and come one morning and tell a cow move left these are animals our time with god is under attack hear me carefully our time with god that is the principal factor that sponsors our knowledge of him is under serious attack and if a generation does not stand up to say satan what are you doing our children you see these little kids running up and down they will no longer have time for god there is a system that is derailing men away and is doing it in a very subtle way it's not happening overnight you check the schedules of the average man there is nothing about god there aside from one religious devotion that is done in 10 minutes god is not you can't give god 10 minutes of your time and want to host his glory you come back to sleep you are tired and it's not like you were doing anything kingdom satan system he manipulates men like he's playing a chess something is wrong brothers and sisters this is i'm starting tonight with a clarion call something is wrong our generation really needs to seek the lord but not under the conditions that the devil has put us in you're not going to seek the lord when your rent is about killing you you will just dance around and give thanks but not to seek the lord it's amazing how we have to sit down and specially create time for god we don't specially create time for money we are seeking it all our lives we don't specially create time for fame we don't specially create time for a living but when it comes to god there has to be an extra effort it says as for me and my house it didn't say we'll be christians we will it's a commitment as for he was not saying as for a pastor who is now into this burden called ministry say as for me and my house i have made a decision that i will serve the lord our generation is under serious threat look how hard the devil has made it for an average young man to be established even at age 40 he has not even started establishment if he's to live 80 years that's half of his life gone and don't forget that when he's 60 70 his strength may not be there again and the bible says that we should serve god in the days of our youth so he rubbishes the days of our youth so that we spend our entire life looking for what to eat what to drink trying to educate our minds trying to earn a living 
and then we give him some little time devotions here one program one emotional crusade here we will never it's impossible to institutionalize god to a generation that way if we want our children and our children's children to serve the lord let me tell you we must make god a big deal in our generation not a factor you add to your life if you are a christian but the basis of your living i'm concerned especially about our teenagers most of them don't know god again ask them when we were teenagers one young man who is not even serious just a sunday school goer can recite 30 verses it doesn't matter whether he loves god or not but you ask one of these are young ones to recite even john 3 16 that unbelievers who were passing around church knew you ask them and hear what they will tell you but ask them what is the latest app the latest computer game huh the latest uh, what do we call it all these funny things they are not wrong in themselves but something is happening to a generation if we don't pay attention we will cry in old age and say lord did i fail my generation these are my contemplations the level of non-attention to god is becoming a thing of concern we are going to churches sundays churches are full with members wednesday activity i'm talking of seeking the lord not as a profession for a man of god where he gets salary at the end of the month as for me and my house i will serve the lord most people who serve the lord is because they have given up on the matters of life there is no hope of sending any child to school there is no hope of anything they know they would die whether or not they serve the lord so they say okay since i have two years left let me just try to do something no our generation has brought an option be poor and fail and serve the lord or be blessed and be occupied trying to make a living who gave us that option as for me and my house i will serve the lord that one day i will come to your house on a weekday and hear sounds of worship from your gate not cassette you and your four children are serving the lord and i say by two o'clock I thought you should be earning a living and you say he showed me another system now we are serving the lord and visitors pull their mouth while they are languishing in the squalor of rebellion and watch you say pastor alpha you are serving the lord jedediah is 12 years and his teenager friends are there all around smoking their destinies away and this child is there serving the lord it is selfishness and wickedness that makes us to forget the generation that is coming i'm sorry to say it and I, I love our parents we have many of our elderly people here i love them but one of the mistakes that our fathers made was they were very selfish they did not remember that a generation was coming so all they did was to educate their minds and look for food to eat there's hardly any heritage given to a young man every young man starts almost from ground zero spiritually financially the time a young man should use building his spirit is fighting warfare because the chains that have held him at 30 he must spend one year contending for victory as for me and my house i can't claim it for everybody but as for me and my house we will serve the lord how many of us here got born again directly by our parents how many of you some of us were just around and salvation by the mercy of god met you in one sunday school some of you salvation met you at the point of death did you know that for many of us we never had the talk about god we had godliness in a religious way every time there was bible study something happened a sound in the zinc demotion that was imminent or something that sponsored some emotional reaction say as for me 
and my house say as for me and my house i will serve the lord are we together yes it matters that we make this decision right now that we will serve the lord we will serve the lord i've been doing a lot of counseling lately especially for our dear ones that are getting married and i look at them my first concern is will your home serve the lord will your life serve the lord let me tell you there is a wicked babylonian financial system there that was designed to make sure you don't serve the lord how can one man do five jobs because he's trying to pay rent it's a cause you wake up by six do a job to 12 and satan makes sure his tip end comes from there and then you start another one till four and your body is weak but you know if you don't do this you will not eat well and you start another one and in the next five years that man dies and leaves seven children look at our dear mothers something is wrong go listen to me i came tonight to talk to you from the depth of my heart it's a vow i built myself that's the truth you bail yourself through a commitment of obedience but my job is to share this with you that if we don't wake up and join ignorant people or this proud religiosity that only focuses on the matters of godliness and leaves the matters of life one day you will stand and watch you will be a mighty man of god with a big parish and your wife and you will watch your children with pity a letter come and stand before you we've been expelled not because we smoked not because we drank because the means to make it happen was not there you will be in a church and the owner will come and lock the church while service is going on and drive you out as for me and my house everything that must be put in place in my life to allow me serve God I will put in place if you can make that commitment tonight we have achieved something so far it says the things that pertain unto life and godliness and those things the equipping comes through knowledge 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 there is no shortcut to greatness there is no shortcut to glory sacrifice has always been the non-negotiable condition the sacrifice of your commitment your life your resources your attention you may not have the best of of atmosphere and environment but there is a determination that superimposes those things for the sake of my generation i will present jesus are we blessed the things that pertain unto life and godliness there are some of us and it really grieves my heart as young as we are condition as we call it has taken away our focus from god there are some of us here early 20s yet you have to be sending something home god is calling you into ministry but the focus is not there the moment he's speaking here comes the bills here comes the whatever and you know that your poor aged mother who couldn't go to school our fathers many of them largely disobedient and proud people although they don't have any result you see that and they yoke all of that the average home right now has many relatives waiting for their elder brother to marry because he's the one who will continue the education for them if all you see is poverty you are not seeing well you must see an attack on a generation if all you see is sickness you are not seeing well you must see an attack look at the long-term effect of that a day will come our men will no longer go to church because they have to work all day on sunday to add to it it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow so by the time the father is not there to raise the child the devil positions somebody who is now employed who now teaches that child is it, whether the father is a pastor or a bishop is not the issue look at the children of men of god
this is a cry and a burden that is boiling in my heart we must redeem not only ourselves but redeem a generation we must start thinking transgenerationally don't say you are too young if the entire scope of your life is just me my marriage my home my this no you must start thinking you see that when koinonia started this young boy seated here was in the loins of prophecy today he's now hearing you will be surprised one day now this small boy you see will be going to secondary school one day he will be writing jam and you will open your eyes and see that i made a mistake i cannot correct again many of us seated here the reason why our lives are delayed is because we have to pay the price that was made by our parents before we start building our own lives you've not even started building your own life yet you are paying a debt you know nothing about then when you are 50 and have paid then you now start your own life it's an attack listen to me very carefully it's an attack an attack on the integrity of god an attack on a generation that can seek god all these revelations that we dish out in the body of christ will soon become useless if we ignore these things because there will be nobody to hear them again all the dimensions of heavens and the stars and the constellations we would talk to ourselves as men of god on stage while everybody runs around everywhere trying to make a living make a living is a cause there are many of our parents is in their deathbed they will confess that i was called to be a prophet to my generation called to be a prophet they would have been at the dimension of Benihim today. Imagine how many destinies would have been changed if they answered the call. But they were hijacked. And they only see the visions in their parlor. God shows them global events and they are there. No grace and influence to effect it. You read about these generals. Some of them can hold one year of prayer. You know, sometimes... Men of God hold prayer meetings. Is it not those who have eaten that will come? If I hold a prayer meeting five days in a week, Pastor Alpha, you're a lecturer. Except God grants you grace, should you can't be effective. You are only effective when you have options. And that's what Satan wants to make sure a whole generation does not have. No option. No option there is an attack on our generation we must open our eyes and see it this is not just the issue of money this is not the issue of influence this is the issue of the destiny of a generation the prophetic destiny the prophets labored in the bible and prophesied about our generation and they died not seeing this now we have come in the scene and many of us are just playing games with our lives doing the same old things that brought pain to us so that our own children will cry i want to serve the lord not because i'm a preacher i want to serve the lord because my life was meant to be a revelation of his glory i want to serve the lord i want to be the one to coach my children not sunday school son sit down let me teach you the bible not police station teach my child how to live not a rehab center teach your child or daughter how to live is god speaking to us tonight i'm challenging you there is a serious burden in my heart if we do not arise for our generation let me tell you very soon you will be laboring on your child and the lawless children of another person who is not listening to what i'm saying will be there to become the strongholds we not only must care about our children we must care about our generation one child 90 percent of our children are influenced to be bad they are not bad on their own you are laboring to train them there is another godless man somewhere and they all meet in the same place and cain dominates abel and make our children feel sorry for being christians you look at many of us here you are looking at me now look how ashamed you are 
if you are in the social sphere now you are in church you are jumping but once you are there are you drinking no i don't drink are you this no you and they look at you oh, what a child this guy's eyes have no and you feel so guilty for loving god and being attention and paying attention to him it's like the in thing now is rebellion you are a man to the degree to which you are stubborn lawless rebellious and proud that's what we are marketed to a generation that is the portrait of a superhero that our children are learning if you must be a superhero be rebellious be a bully be everything but a christian the average young child is not interested in church again again you invite them find out how many teenagers come for koinonia you'll be surprised there are young people there are old people but the teenagers don't come it's not because it's night they stroll around and then go around and do a lot of things and satan comes he wants to capture that generation but in the name of jesus christ there are people who will say no way there are people who will create a spiritual barricade that as the priest of my home no way satan there is no entrance huh that gentleman who was talking about aleko or whatever it is look at now that a time will come your child will be saying mommy we are from benway but what is that you say i settled it already don't worry it was well settled that that discussion just one day i will tell you about the story that once upon a time in our village people don't reach 30 but i stood as an altar and i settled it are we together and one of the deceptions let me begin to build my discussion tonight now one of the deceptions that i think god is granting me grace to connect tonight is what i call the danger of imbalance write it down the danger the catastrophic danger of imbalance it not only matters that we communicate truth it matters that the truth we communicate must be the whole counsel of god everybody say the whole counsel of god the whole counsel of god is a definition of all his intention everything he desires for a people within a time period to know about him represents the whole counsel of god for that dispensation and one of the things that you see satan playing out right now is an attempt to use religion as a tool that sponsors imbalance in our quest seeing then that he cannot stop us from having an appetite for god he now begins to sell imbalance to believers and let me tell you something brothers and sisters imbalance is as dangerous as falsehood imbalance is as dangerous as a lie let's examine a few things before i talk about imbalance i shared one time about three great errors that the lord revealed to me in the body of christ if you remember when we were talking about the body of christ let me do a quick recap that the lord began to reveal to me that there were three great errors in the body of christ the first error is found in first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 first timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 he said the spirit speaketh expressly the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith we're examining the first error now giving heed to seducing spirits and then the doctrine of devils everyone say the doctrine of devils another word for this is apostasy apostasy a deviation from god's known pattern of operation apostasy the first error that the body of christ has to contend with is the error of apostasy listen to my message the apostate church apostasy a deviation from the truth and also a deviation from god's pattern two things there 
a deviation from the truth is called apostasy but a deviation from the pattern of communicating that truth is also apostasy even if the information is correct but the spiritual system of transferring it is wrong it is still apostasy are we together in god's dealings with men both the information and the pattern are important not just the information don't just say the most important thing is that i'm healed the most important thing is that i prosper the most important thing is that i get anointing no sir there is a predefined pattern when god looks at you and you are doing business with god what you got is not as important as how it came don't just say i was anointed don't just say i was prosperous don't just say i i got married don't just say i had a child god is obsessed with patterns that if you must host his glory then there must be a formation that must be according to pattern apostasy i teach that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one the communicator of the message himself not being of god that's the first dimension where they whether as a man of god as a businessman whoever attempting to communicate anything the plan from the beginning was deception intrinsically the communicator himself is of the devil there is such a possibility in the body of christ and in our environment not just apostate informations apostate people people who are not they were never never of god from the first place are we blessed and then number two the people the communicators of those truths may be genuine but the information they are communicating is a doctrine of demons you can be genuine sincere let me take ministry as a case study you can be a sincere man of god you love god you are not fake but the content of your communication is a doctrine that is not sponsored by the spirit of christ the bible says that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and then doctrines of demons i can be a genuine man of god genuinely anointed by god but because of a system the bible calls seduction are we together now i can deviate from god's way of doing things and now become a communicator i am not fake but my message is not genuine both of these cases can be classified as apostasy so that's the first error the second error that i teach is the error of individualism also the error of indifference write it down indifference what we call i don't care attitude right individualism we don't think kingdom we don't think generational we think me so if a jimmy's leg is having a problem provided it has not affected me it's none of my business this is where many many men of god many many of we pastors pentecostals especially have missed it we have missed it big time in this area we are so individual individualistic we don't care about what is happening to the body provided my church provided my life is immune for it, from it to hell with the body are we together yeah so if the danger has not come to meet me it doesn't matter if an armed robber comes to steal in a pastor's church nearby it was not my church it was not my member my kingdom financier was not robbed so pastor may god bless you if someone dies provided he's not a member of my church it's amazing how we leaders mentor people to deliberately select being in the body is not enough you must be associated with me to be able to enjoy certain benevolence that is meant for the body it's a poisonous spirit the error of indifference the error of individualism when god begins to build his army his system of operation 
is that he takes us beyond individualism and connects us as an organism if your leg is having pains your head can pain you because of the leg is that true um we're returning back from kano and we stopped at a filling station to get fuel and one guy was marketing a funny product you know these guys that market something at the filling station and he said um there's a the drug or the lotion whatever it is is for teeth <laughs> but you rub it on your leg yes he said you don't have to rub the thing on your teeth you just rub it on your leg now that, that's a body consciousness at least i didn't buy it but he taught me that the leg is related to the teeth because we have been taught to apply drugs only where it hurts and leave other parts and he said no no let me show you another formula you can apply it in the leg but you can touch the teeth that means i can pray from zaria and God can preserve Kenneth Copeland because it is the body. I can hear that there is an attack on a man of God and not say, after all, they don't listen. Say, no, no, Lord. This whatever it is, he's part of the body. His integrity is our integrity as the body. And Lord, arise in your mercy for your namesake. But we keep becoming individualistic. You as believers, what is your pride? Our pride, let me tell you the pride of our generation. Three things. One, revelation. Rema. The extent to which you bring an exegesis of the truth. And nothing is wrong with that. Right? Greek words, Hebrew words, play around with all kinds of concordances. And then dish out mysteries. We love that. Two, prophecy. I give you a prophetic word which is not bad three anointing and our definition of anointing is fall down not result fall down just make sure you hit that bench as a testament that the communicator is having something and so this erroneously become the pivot of our pursuit we're looking for revelation we're looking for an ability to communicate which is is is, is to be desired and then we're looking for an anointing to make sure when we step into a meeting people just fall up and down and when these things happen we believe that we are fine and we don't extend the scope of our alliance to god to extend beyond our personal comforts to think body in terms of administration you know i love koinonia thank god this is where he's planted me but in terms of the health of the church i am passionately concerned about the body of christ just follow me we are going somewhere tonight are we blessed the third error that i teach um, i have taught this already so is what i call exaggerated confrontation of error this is where it even gets sad exaggerated confrontation of error that means that error that is attempted to be corrected but not from a standpoint of love error that is attempting to be corrected from a standpoint of intrinsic intimidation by the supposed corrector now listen very carefully you see please come Jimin. can i use you Amen. when you see Jimin, one word you think wealth finances right well anointing too anointing no, at least last week you saw it praise god now watch this chances are that if god has called a jimmy to represent um that dimension of maybe the holy spirit and finances to people and i have a bias with finances either as a result of men, my mentality or my frustrations two of them can cause the same thing i can have a poor mentality or i can be secretly frustrated now if there is an imbalance in a jimmy's life or his way of communicating that chances are that because i was angry since even before the imbalance came now that i have found a scapegoat of a lapse in him i will correct it in a way you know it was paining me this is not the point is not to correct the point is to vent out pain there is a big this exaggerated confrontation is even more deadly than error itself i once had a well somewhere a man of god was talking about those he was saying they teach people how to pray in tongues somewhere you know trying to be sarcastic that man himself does not pray in tongues 
he doesn't believe it but there is no there's no legitimate case for him to fight it so he now routes through a church or a man of god that he sees teaching people he now uses that one exception this is how you know error is exaggerated a man of god or a businessman or whatever picks one single error and robs it off beyond the proportion of his relevance you know that the, the goal is not to sponsor correction the goal is to help manage intimidation are we together now so Ejimi talks about money and all of that and all of a sudden i'm there in my frustration and i turn and i say be careful all these guys that just talk about money all the time the truth of the matter is that i may be right in speaking about that unique situation but it's not coming from a standpoint that wants to contribute to the health of the body i am only communicating because i am intrinsically frustrated thank you sir are we blessed some of us here seated looking at me have become victims even of this it tells on how we hate anointed people it tells on how we hate wealthy people are we together now yes and so we try everybody right now is in the ministry of correction that is the latest anointing that is going all around everybody is correcting everybody everybody once you have access to a mic and you can talk and people can hear you everybody is correcting everybody let me tell you this the greatest danger in the church now is not error the greatest danger is imbalance and this imbalance has come from this third point this is where i want to build my case tonight so pay attention so that you find out whether you are part of it and trust god to help you tonight everybody shout imbalance, imbalance. there is something about the limitation of pentecostals that our orthodox brothers and sisters capitalize on and use it as the basis why you should not be open to the things of the holy spirit then there are things that the pentecostals use as their excuse for thinking an orthodox lifestyle is too mean and basic and all of that and all of them may have some sense of justification but the truth is that there is an inner anger for one another just waiting for a legitimate excuse are we together now yeah whether it is an issue of marriage or finances or fidelity or issues that have to do with um, administration and leadership whatever it is how you know that correction is not coming from a sincere point is the exaggeration exaggeration i always say you use a, a hammer to kill a fly a simple tap on that fly it would die but when you use hammer you were angry it's not about the fly the fly just happens to be what the hammer is hitting obviously that hammer was not designed for the fly it's just that the fly got in the way of the hammer and boy will that hammer hit the fly there is a spirit of pride listen carefully it looks like it's coming from god but i'm exposing lucifer there is something satan is doing in the especially among we men of god that god has privileged to have access to revelation and anointing and a dimension of the miraculous pride is gradually eating us up because we believe that because of the little results we have we have authority by ourselves to correct everybody and everything every man of god is trying to show what another man is doing wrong everyone is trying to show that this is wrong why are you praying like this the other one will say you too why are you keeping quiet when you are praying the other one say what is the meaning of warfare the other one say keep waiting demons are coming see let me tell you this let me tell you this listen very carefully listen carefully if we do not trust god to rise up and correct these imbalances we are going to authorize satan to destroy us god's goal is not to produce koinonia in all the earth if god gives me an assignment and says apostle through you the gospel will get to the ends of the earth he was talking to all the people who will come out spiritually and prophetically through my loins through there are ministries that will come out of me they are an extension of that instruction 
the idea is not to turn every believer in nigeria into koinonia it's a failed project from day one and anybody who knows god will never be part of that failed agenda so god is not glorified when koinonia has more members god is glorified when the kingdom advances listen very carefully because right now the entire scope of our soul winning agenda is sometimes it's even sheep stealing i say this because i love the body you are sitting quietly taking fresh air someone comes to preach to you you say okay i'm already born again as soon as he's leaving you another person is coming say your brother just say it doesn't matter you just listen have you have you been given um, um are you are you aware of our church services he say yes he say come and the next time you see him look how people feel guilty and blackmailed because i invited you for koinonia you didn't come and you make it look like you are the worst sinner in the whole world you are just because you did not come that's not salvation that's pressure like banks give people target bring this by this month we have begun to propose some of those campaigns and we must be careful kingdom advancement is not the advancement of a name of a church is the advancement of the agenda of god in the hearts of men and across the spheres now it 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 is important that the individual ministries do their best to be the the platforms for people to be saved and equipped but that's not the idea there are people it's one of the reasons why pastors never invite people to their pulpit because someone comes and in two minutes before he preaches he has said almost 90 things about his church and sometimes some can even be sarcastic to downplay the church that now invited them you hear about people who go for conferences and before you know it while in that conference he saw a keyboard is playing well he saw a worshiper singing well and the man of god will collect their numbers travel back and now call them and begin to indoctrinate them you are you you sound too good your pastor doesn't deserve you come and join a moving train we say and then the member now leaves his church to join the supposed moving train and then we make it look like god is only with us it is pride let me repeat the idea that makes you believe you are the only representation of God in a territory is pride. The day Koinonia believes that we are the only and even the ultimate representation of God in this region is a sign that error has already eaten beginning from me to everyone. May God forbid it. Are we together now? Yes. this is the basis behind the show of superiority from men of god to churches to business people imbalance imbalance the the inability to construct the truth of god's word so that it becomes edifying to you and to the body now let me teach you something the dealings of god has a side effect watch this i've shared it here that if god calls me into the healing ministry watch this because of the character and the nature of my training are we together it will require a level of meticulousness in a dimension chances are that because of my concentration i will trivialize other matters of the kingdom too they are important but because they were not captured in my training process i will assume that they are not important are we together now so when i now come up this is the healing evangelist evangelist joshua selman and i'm healing and when i see somebody in another dimension is the reason why we reject certain ministries in the body because we have not been trained you see young people come and dance and while they are dancing someone is just waving his head and say what a wasted generation simply because the way god trained you that was not captured as part of the experience of the training so you can downplay it then to mean that these are not serious things when people come to church they sleep and snore every other time until the man of god comes in now the uh, god had been moving since praise and worship you were not taught to respect it a time of worship people are rolling on the floor god is speaking to people someone has received this breakthrough already but you were trained that until someone stands on stage so if the man of god now comes and starts rolling you say what kind of church is this you don't preach here yeah? i want you to listen to me very carefully why am i teaching you this because god is helping us to be a blessing to many others 
are we together in balance there are many people in the body of Christ whose ministries have been strangled no room to find expression simply because the man of God who founded the church the experience of allowing those ministries to find expression were not captured in his dealings with God and so because of that the moment you see any other ministry that is outside your scope of understanding you fight it you abuse it you can call it of the devil you blackmail it amazing do you know why God limits you like this so that it is in partnership with other dimensions in the body you see how complete the body is you see that so if God has granted me grace to walk in a dimension of the teaching ministry and I don't walk say in miracles and Sam come Sam Sam walks in the miraculous it is my identifying with Sam it now supplies a dimension of God that I wouldn't have seen are we together now for Sam the way God dealt with him it was just vision and power so when Sam comes to the stage he said look stop all this grammar of Bible study let's go straight to wheelchairs he is also in error he does not know it's just that his own nature of ministry is what is desired by the masses they want power immediately so chances are that you will see that in Sam's church you receive miracles but there's no spiritual growth because the system he just the it was the God Almighty God that was the revelation that was given to him for you the rabbi of rabbis that's what you got so you can sit down and teach one series for one year and then I reject you I say Sam all it takes is mental transformation not power people need to be leaders and then Sam is saying continue there you are watching your members crying what they need is power both of them God is with them but they believe God is not with each other you see that mistake Benjamin, please can i use you again please come and then all of a sudden this guy comes he's a leader he's an entrepreneur he's a businessman and i said look all these your business principles i laid hands on somebody a millionaire's child without knowing any finance thing and all of a sudden they gave me an estate all these things you are trying to teach people is nonsense teach them power and estate comes and the members ignore this principle and they find out that estate didn't come after 10 years the man is married now the preacher got an estate but the hearer didn't get it are we together now all three of them now chances are that a jimmy may be angry and say look at this guy power 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 let's see whether you ever rise to the government this is the fight now everybody let me tell you what satan does when satan wants to destroy you if he knows there's nothing he can do about your anointing he covers you from seeing the body so the only thing you see is your church and your performance and based on that he will now use supposed loyal sons to keep you in that state the power when you came into that meeting you know i like you you don't talk anything no verse bible was not open straight to power and he said you mean it you were impressed say yes now this is a group here hiding themselves and shortchanging themselves in imbalance yet they will believe that because the man sees visions he has the entire scope of what god is doing and then he will have the effrontery to now indoctrinate his members into believing that anytime you see our teacher man or anytime you see our businessman ignore them just get power and rest and that's what is happening so we have a congregation of people today who have no regard for the word of God turn to Philippians you see them just snoring once you hear so, ah, 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 you see, that's right this is I mean we are, we are in church now that's all people want and while that shout is going on the business guy says when you finish go and pay your rent shout roll on the floor your rent is the, the tribute collectors are there and you can't say he's not godly because he's rich and it's with part of the money your church was built so the pastor can't shout at him you know what it will mean to you look at the confusion now let me tell you no one of these three will admit they are incomplete 
it is one of the hardest things for men of God to do to admit that regardless of what they have seen they need to spread their horizon beyond the scope that was revealed to them to see the body it is in the seven lampstands that the fullness of Christ was seen the seven lampstands I had a voice when I turned I didn't see Christ I saw the complete church with all the dimensions when I saw the complete church I saw the fullness of Christ if I had seen two of them I would see only his hands and think God is a hand then I see another church and see his eyes and think all to God is prophecy then I see another church and I see his legs and I think all in life is progress but the complete church revealed the complete Christ is God speaking to us this is a revelation that will bless you beyond imagination and so Ejimi now organizes a seminar to correct people and gathers all his members and say look all those power guys don't mind them all those revelation guys the Bible says money answered that's the members answering him now all things whereas there's somebody dying in the hospital with cancer a millionaire that money cannot do anything about are we together now answered all things and if any of his member dare ask him and say sir why don't the power of god work in you say are you stupid am i not rich is that no power you see that person becomes a disloyal person imagine how many of us are called disloyal for asking questions pastor we don't pray in tongues in this church but is it all right don't ever ask me i am this i am that don't go and join all those riffraff roadside prophets man of god is it okay if i meet a man of god to hear the counsel of god no the word is everything just focus on the word don't let any roadside prophet come and deceive you whereas that man is in utter confusion and five minutes of this ministry can correct 10 years in his life many members would have moved forward if only they went to where the eyes of god is but they refuse because the pastor has the hand of god and they keep seeing the hand of god the hand does not see it only holds what the eyes see listen to me because many of us are starting ministry now some of us are in ministry some of us are leaders and already we are if we are not careful we're get, we getting into big error we've been mentored by all kinds of people that's why i see as a man of god if god gives you any influence over people go and pray and say lord let me not raise a people that will be defiant from your patterns i say it with all humility not to blow the trumpet of this ministry but by his grace koinonia has been part and parcel of the building and the lifting of many ministries as a person we have account numbers of many ministries that i'm not even connected to they are not my friends we could just hear that there is a program somewhere and say look we have to do something the other day i think dunamis came and they were opening their branch here our protocol department all of them they said look, let's go and serve i said quickly make sure that anything that is needed let it be given my koinonia i am apostle i'm the owner of zaria god gave it to me it's my property no this is why men of god don't sleep this is why men of god yoke members with covenant swear that you will stay why will i swear why you change clothes why why shouldn't i i mean I, I should swear that what no or we now make it prophetic god told me the day you leave me or the day you do this there is a cause where this is a lie there is no cause coming anywhere anywhere just because someone is falling down when we are saying it does not mean it's a lie there is no cause anywhere even god you can choose to leave him I said before you life and death why will somebody come and threaten you let me tell you the truth i love the body but it's a lie it's our insecurity it's not the holy spirit don't blame the, the holy spirit has no part in this people stay when they are changed people don't just become loyal to a leader foolishly don't you know that in the kingdom you keep things by leaving them hmm whosoever keeps his life shall lose it whosoever keeps his members shall whosoever tries to keep money shall 
but whosoever loses it for my sake are you learning something thank you sir thank you. exaggeration now let me teach you something it is true that there are erroneous things in the body but hear me correcting the body of christ is a ministry you have to be called into it the same way god calls someone to be a prophet you are called is part of the apostolic and prophetic system of governance and it's not just every apostle and every prophet that is a corrector even among apostles and prophets there are rankings and dimensions not just because you're an apostle or prophet or pastor or teacher i am pastor so 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 i read in harvard i am no no sir we are misleading people there are spiritual conditions for you to have the authorization to be shown the weakness of the body let me tell you this you can observe what you think is the weakness of the body but god can show you what is the weakness of the body there is a condition to end that level of intimacy from god where god can show you this is where my body is weak correct it hey jimmy if your son or your wife feels down do you just walk to anybody on the street and say my wife my son has a little rashes here or my son has knife caught him here and you open your son's cloth do you do that you go to an authorized place called a hospital and even in that hospital you enter a room and if need be in that room you can pull up and you are comfortable because it is the authorized place where that matter is addressed if you pull your son's cloth on the road somebody will look at you and say man of god what is going on but if you pull your son's cloth there it is the place not every place is a place of correction let me tell you this there is a condition you must sustain as a man of god to be afforded the opportunity to contribute in correcting the body and that element is not prayer that element is not fasting that element is not even revelation that element is genuine love for the body not for god for the body you will never be given access to correct the body until you love that body you can't correct the body from the standpoint of hatred you can't correct the body from the standpoint of resentment you can't correct the body from the standpoint of error it's impossible if i hate keyboards and this guy is making a mistake i don't have the right to correct him because my correction will meet with a bias that has been there let me tell you this i travel a lot and you can ask those who travel with me i go to all kinds of churches and they do all kinds of things sometimes i am surprised when i see what people do in many churches my mind i say if i catch my child doing that kind of thing we will talk oh, we will talk seriously yet i am able to have the accommodation let me give you a secret if you look at christ in every church you will find him mm. let me repeat they went to a tomb where there was no life and found jesus there a tomb where there is no life yet when the woman kept looking she saw jesus in that tomb is it in your bible the living have nothing to do in the grave but a woman was determined to see jesus and although her location was the grave she still saw him so that dead church that you think your pastor is as dead as whatever the day your heart is humble and you know that the builder is not a man of god but the spirit of god one day in the confusion of your pastor he will say something that is the secret for your lifting now we who god has helped with little revelation little grace here this is what we do when we go to church we hold our bibles arrogantly and sit at the back we don't sit in front because the man doesn't have anything to say and then he comes as usual turn to the book of this and that and god so loved the world are you aware of this and someone is just nodding and say oh god i i would have listened to a message that would bless me what is this guy doing and wasting my time and you think what you are demonstrating is superiority because of spiritual level it's a sign you have fallen for the deception yourself because the higher you rise in the kingdom the more you know we are products of his mercy so while you stand there and watch the man of god ramble and make mistakes and quote wrong scriptures 
in the midst of it you what if you really look at jesus the holy spirit will start speaking to you and say truly there is this treasure in earthen vessels you say this man may not be so accurate yet he has been pastoring for 15 years and the members didn't leave him while you who has revelation is struggling to have 10 members and the god starts revealing to you you are now seeing jesus in that weak man that there is a grace upon this man one day in the midst of his confusion he would tell you t.l osborne came to lagos and he was part of those who were helping to hold his bag and t.l osborne touched his head you said that's where he got it pastor i know you don't preach well but i just found out you are carrying something i need touch me and the man said no are you who preach very well i was impressed he said pastor you were impressed with my revelation but what i need now is what you carry there is no man of God that comes to my life that I cannot receive anything from. No. That's why I see some of our fathers. I don't sit down and say, oh, revelation, revelation. There are places I travel to minister. I already know that they may not have that level of word content. But when it's time to pray, I'm humble. Please, reveal it to me. Many of us are about to lose it because if it is not a company of people who have your level of spiritual enlightenment they don't matter to you you will miss something because the greatest treasures you need will be hidden in that reverend that cannot speak english that reverend that is it one day god will tell you go for the capro missions program i say lord me me that i'm looking to be young Cho. what is capro how many will forest to go and win with soul when i can snap my finger i've learned the law of exemption and god says break your pride and follow them to that village you follow them to that village and you sit down and see a house reverend who has not been sick once for 22 years god will say this is why i brought you kneel down let him release something upon you before you carry your pride and be lying that you have not taken drugs for 30 years and die two weeks later on kneel down let that man give you something genuine let me tell you this one of the secrets of my spiritual growth is my open-heartedness towards the body not necessarily my perfection in pursuing god my open-heartedness that does not mean you jump at error no no when i discern grace i realize there is something this woman never built a house but she never went hungry she would tell you every pastor that rose up came and stayed in her house there is something you should receive there we are about losing that's why many of us do you know let me tell you one of the things with error once you stay in a dimension and don't open up to the body your area of strength will magnify and your area of lapse will become clear it will be clear that only your hands are growing but your head is remaining small it will be clear that you are growing in prosperity but your knowledge of God is diminishing. It will be clear that you are growing in the miraculous, but you don't have a heart for God. By the grace of God, I want to raise the balanced people that they can look at your life and see that the matters of life, when they come to passion for God, you are there. Prayer, you are there. Not because I have all, but I know how to bring all. I travel somewhere and I see a man of God ah apostle you are the great man and your messages while he's saying that i'm observing lord what do i see this man has more character than me i may pray more than him but if we stand here and somebody is about to kill us i would deny christ and run but this guy will stay and die that means there is a grace for courage that i need our pastor is coming from adamawa state i had the privilege they invited me i've been there three times now sir yes three times and when Boko Haram struck 2014 sir am I right and destroyed those people in Mubi it was that meeting that was like um, it was a starting point for the churches again while I preached and saw the way they honored me I asked myself a question I said with all this mouth I make if I was part of the pastors that stood before Boko Haram will I denounce Christ don't be too fast say me uh -uh. now there are protocol people protecting you but there a pastor can go out in the morning and say wife if you don't see me just know that i died for christ that means there is a grace 
you say the man is not praying in tongues but you who is praying in tongues you run away at a sound on your zinc this guy is standing and watching a gun do you think it is normal no by faith abel offered it takes something to offer yourself now a wise man will meet that man of god and say sir you may not have the grace to preach and heal like me but i see that there is a dimension revealed to you if i stay where i am i will raise sons that can pray but never stand for christ i need that grace i admit i don't have it i admit that dimension has been opened up to you i humble myself sir it does not make you small this is what we will never do as men of god our pride will never allow us we will hide and listen to tapes in the secret Hi. and some of you are already learning those kinds of things you never see yourselves and celebrate yourself that guy is pastor femi pastor femi of where rema which which rema ah please i came into this town i'm a man of god already who is this pastor of where under who no if you don't change from this a generation will show that there was a lapse of god that we did not tap into don't ever let anybody say the prophetic is not useful just because you found the word of god don't call every prophet a reef raff and a roadside prophet there is a dimension only prophecy can birth no amount of study can bring you there there is a dimension only mental transformation can bring so don't insult Mel Mel mensa otterbill and say oh these guys are just uh -uh. there is a dimension only joyce mayer can bring there is a dimension only benny Hinn can bring there is a dimension only dr lukoya can bring there is a dimension only papa kumui can bring you ignore Dr. Lukoya and demons kill you in your pride. <laughs> you die the death of a fool before your time. A man who was the best in molecular genetics and left it. Left something, went to school abroad. Exceptional in molecular genetics. And came and humbled himself to carry the cross. And all of a sudden you see him. And just say, what is all these things? We even mimic them in laughter and the demons say thank god for such a foolish generation are we together then you see a man of god papa Ia deboe can just stand i'm mentioning names because i'm saying positive things about them and because their fathers indeed may god bless you you're like i i need And you listen to td jakes and while he's moving keyboards are playing and moving and you just came out of seven days dry retreat like a skeleton almost dying i said what is this guy saying is it just to say you will come out that you can't say in one minute and while you are there in your pride slaves left africa and went to us god picks a man out of them and makes one of the best preachers you didn't ask how it happened when they traced his origin they found out he's Igbo, a nigerian are you learning who have you resented because of imbalance some of us right now we love god but we have been we have educated ourselves into believing that some people in the body are not relevant for our growth i'm telling you you are already in imbalance especially if you're a man of god if you are hearing me and you're in this mistake change now change quickly never go back home and put men of god and keep bringing them one by one. Oh, this one doesn't have fire this one he doesn't have this ah this one i like his suit i like this one i like his this be careful there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism there is something that joshua selman will never see even if i fast for 400 days it will not be covered by a demon it will be covered by god himself so that i will need a jimmy to see it there is something a jimmy will never see 
until he looks at a uh, pastor toby or a pastor here in adamawa there was something about god i learned when i went to adamawa sir I, I say it i have never seen a level of generosity from people like that women some of them old enough to be my mother and you see i'll say it till today when i go to movie they see me they start jumping daddy oh yo yo people with doctors lecturers with such depth of humility i don't know if i can do that for anybody and while they do those things i don't sit down with my pride and say wow you mean they acknowledge me this far i sit down and say lord let this grace for humility that will be upon a man of 50 years before i now die in the next 10 years because of pride do you see that god has put the remedy for our fall in the body but because we could not tap into it imbalance is a destroyer there are many families today that have no business being in poverty if they would listen to those carrying the graces it's amazing that what we resent is what we secretly desire oh i prophesy your name is divine ah man of god and some of oh, these riffraffs divine whereas one day he tried to he said what's your name are you gabriel he said no i'm a jimmy and just ah he said no he he wanted it secretly he was just too hot and then he said no what is not all about prophesying you must be careful most of the things people criticize they test it secretly when it becomes too hot they live as if nothing happened then they create a theology can one person be praying for 12 hours life is not all about prayer that man has tried to pray secretly he, he thought it's just by energy the grace is not there so he sees someone fasting dry two weeks there's a man i know in abuja i don't know anybody that fasts on earth like him one day maybe when we are doing something in koinonia and he honors me a lot i'm sure i'll bring him one day to pray that man can go for um, no food no water not that you drink water in the night dry ah! if that man prays even standing close to him you will feel as if they are electrocuting you i literally mean it there is no deliverance case that gets to that man that goes back free Abba! before i no, i'm serious i really am serious that guy has stretched this body and brought it under subjection the kind of power that is in that man's voice yet he will come to me like this and still kneel down sometimes i'm tempted to say stand up oh you better stand up and lay hands on me how you know you love the body is your outspoken celebration of the uniqueness in it the moment you are ashamed to celebrate the uniqueness in the body is a sign that something about it is intimidating you oh a beautiful song look how wonderful this guy's voice was when he was singing i was just listening to his speech i said who dash monkey banana let me try that thing i was in a Okuta. my voice ceased just because it was raining yes someone shouting <laughs> are we together now don't forget for those of you who know a little about me i was once a music director i'm not naive musically but now I carry my pride and try what he's doing and that's the end of it. There's no koinonia for one month. So I can choose to respond to my frustration by trivializing him. And say it's not all about pitch. The most important thing is the message. No sir, we need the pitch too. Otherwise, recite a poem. Don't sing. It's not all about prosperity. Okay? carry everything in your house and give to the poor the blogger who is talking is using an ipad that he bought 250,000 and say it's not all about prosperity are we together it's not all about money and there is a hot meal in your kitchen waiting for you and there are poor people there it's not all about prayer yet you have intercessors in your church praying for you so you know prayer is important it's not all about fasting yet people are fasting for you it's not all about prophecy yet you call and say uh, promise just 
find out whether God is saying something around this I'm agreeing with you it's just that I, I'm not I had something I just want to I won't tell you because I is pride just say help me sir I'm trusting to hear something I'm a man of God too but there's there's this the vision is hazy I'm not seeing very well what is there does it mean you are not born again a hazy vision is something that happens to everybody Jesus touched people many times are we together you must reject imbalance the imbalance that comes in approaching the body the imbalance in camping around a dimension as revealed to you and ignoring the usefulness of what God has distributed in the body you must sustain a fortitude tonight to embrace there is something I've learned from our children that no adult can teach me no matter how simple and well behaved you are these children have taught something they have taught me faith they have taught me courage some of do you know some of these little children are in prayer department am i right prayer department they don't miss it so if a child can be in a prayer department what excuse does an adult have Pray. you tell them i'll buy you sweets they won't forget they come back and say uncle my sweet they never ask whether you have the money because they expect you to be adult enough to check whether you have money first before speaking now you learn that thing and when god says i know the thoughts i think towards you like a child you don't start asking lord where will the uncle come from no. you stop learning when pride close your eyes may humility open it tonight so that you can see what is going on you see that's why many of us don't know what god is doing in the body we only knew what he was doing with us in our little corners and we get up and say revival is coming when it has started since because you were not there the virgins had oil but they could not go to the market there were others who had in abundance but the foolish virgins did not get more a time came their own finished they had their own oil but they would have gone to get some more the same way joshua selman has anointing but i need to get some more from benihim i need to get some more from kenneth copeland I need to get some more because the challenges in the future at this my level of anointing will eat me as if i'm not anointed so i will not allow the pride because of the level god has brought me now believe that i can stand benny Hinn's kind of challenge so i need the grace so i will listen when pastors come to me for counseling there's nothing that humbles me more than that and some of those people are anointed people Dr. Luca and Dr. John sent me a text and they said, Apostle, we are coming over. And I said, oh dear, I love you. When I was told, I was told that since around 4 a.m. or so, this is the assistant chaplain. He's also a man of God himself. But he came here since around 4 to sit down. What is there about a man? The veil has been torn and it tears and you, you don't enter. The veil has been torn, you are still poor. The veil has been torn, you are still this whereas you can humble yourself and say every house is built by some man but god is the builder of it all there are people who must assist you in life otherwise you will never rise it's not pride one of the things that god helps me to do at the beginning of the year i go and our daddy escorts me to go and meet the pastors of cgc i go and greet them and get down on my knees with just a little i honor them and i get down on my knees and the pastor and his wife they speak and prophesy over me and lay hands over me i won't come and say see crowd no there is a grace if i were their age i don't know if i would submit to a small boy like this so lord help me before this pride that comes with middle belt and kill me where we don't have anything yet we make a lot of noise lord deliver me from it so that i can look at one of these our little ones tomorrow and say apostle i saw myself laying hands on you and i said do it the girl is shaking i said i said do it and she lays hands and from that day you enter a dimension of revelation you can sit and say god forbid transfer it to another adult let me receive it from the adult and god says you will never get it that way 
Are you blessed? Yes. Imbalance is dangerous. Is why we have not seen. I remember years ago, I tried to pray for a woman. I think somewhere in Abuja also, I can't remember. I prayed for that woman. I have never felt helpless before a sick body like that day. You know how you pray and you know that there's no hope of that prayer being answered under that condition. I couldn't feel any anointing. The woman just stood there. It saddened me. I encouraged this woman. Koinonia, no, Koinonia had not even started. It was just about to start. I said, Lord, how can a man be this helpless? I came in your name, bragged in your name. If you see the scriptures I was quoting, quoted this, 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 the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power and all that. There was no power. Yet the Bible says in my name, I did it, it didn't work. That meant I need to submit to somebody who has the eyes of the spirit to tell me what the Bible was saying. Because it's clear I did not get what Jesus was saying. Are we together? And yet I watched Benny Hinn climb up the stage before he raised one worship song. 40 wheelchairs. 40. Brothers and sisters, this thing is not magic. If you don't have it, find it. Because it is there. If it is not in your life, it is not missing. It only requires the humility to search. You desire the prophetic and it's not in your life. It is available. It will take your humility to search. Man of God, I have prayed. But I know God has directed me. But I do not know whether or not God is calling me to Kogi or Lafia. And the moment you are talking, the Lord just tells the person Lafia. And he says, the Lord is sending you to Lafia. In one minute, the word of the Lord came because of your humility to align. Instead of fasting for 100 days and you hear Lafia, just when you round up the fast, you hear a choir bomb. And as soon as you round up the fast, you hear just. You see that? Whatever is a limitation to you, we are going to pray. Please listen carefully whatever is a limitation to you the word limitation is relative everything you need is already resident within the body if your life is poor god did not make it so you ignore the grace that conveys that possibility if your prayer life is dead it is not god's will you have ignored the end voice that he has put that supply of the spirit upon if you do not have access to the deep things of god it is because pride has made you to take away the relevance the necessity of the word of god i look at people and with all humility i know they have stopped growing they've not backslidden but they put a peg around their lives simply because they cannot open their door and say oh god bring in other dimensions that are not here they stood there and you know that's not their best that's not their greatest hallelujah praise the lord tonight is my prayer that god will deliver us from the error of imbalance that we will escape the danger of imbalance 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 that we will not trivialize the dimension of god that is required for our lives all dimensions cannot be in your life but all dimensions can work for you listen carefully all dimensions cannot be in your life it's impossible but all dimensions available can work for you meaning that it's impossible for me to be as prophetic as ever as apostolic as ever as evangelical as ever no there is the limitation that god puts I can't be Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Mayer and T.D. Jakes and Bishop Oyedeko and Papa Iya Deboe at the same time with the same degree. No, sir. I have to be one of them. But I can enjoy what is on Bishop Oyedeko, Papa Adeboe, Benny Hinn. I can enjoy it through the humility of participations, the word koinonia, sharing together, the ability to extend your hand through humility to say, sir, I have seen the dimension of God's grace in your life and I'm open to let it work in my life. 
and honor becomes the key to that access and all of a sudden you find out that what was a mountain to you is trivialized under a certain kind of grace people have prayed for me in my life I have been a product of many people's prayers I have been surprised at how powerful the body of Christ is I have prayed for people and sometimes I look at what they call a mountain and I am shocked because I know how easy that problem can be solved and in my mind sometimes I wonder where, where were you why did you allow it to get this bad before locating the body for help are we together there is something tonight that you need in God for you to move to the next level that is not yet in your life but it is available and for many of us the error of imbalance has made you to think that because your life cannot produce it it cannot be produced so you just say if it was for me god would have brought it directly through me and just because it didn't come directly through me then it's not important please hear me prosperity is as important as healing healing is as important as prayer prayer is as important as visions are we together salvation is as important as mental transformation mental transformation is as important as your health and hygiene stay in your area of calling but do not allow imbalance make you trivialize what god is doing god is not only working in koinonia brothers and sisters god is working across zaria god is working across the north god is working across africa it is only a privilege for us to be at the level that we are now in his program it's a privilege for us to be contributors that's the word contributors that you can come and listen to the supply of the dimension that god has put in me of course administratively speaking it it is important for you to be able to stay in your area of whatever ministry or whatever church you are part of for the purpose of administration and leadership however let me tell you the truth any man that indoctrinates you into camping around him alone and all the dimension revealed to him whether in the name of mentorship or fatherhood has deceived you if i am your spiritual father it means you have taken you have come under my authority but it does not mean that i represent all of christ to you i represent the voice and the speakings of god in your life but i must have the flexibility to allow you grow and this is my goal god knows i get materials that have nothing to do with me I send it to people in the ministry listen listen to it this will bless you it bless me so much are we blessed we are going to pray father my my father would have prospered if only he listened to that prosperity preacher he said prosperity preachers are rubbish now my father is an evangelist who has lost his house although a preacher of the gospel lord my arrogant business partner father would have been such a man of prayer and he would have seen that accident before it happened but he ignored it because he thought everything was money and he neglected the place of prayer and evil came sat in our house and there was no eyes to see and nobody to manipulate things from the realm of the spirit and we died that death was not caused by god the refusal to tap from what god is doing closed your eyes until there was destruction there's nobody to help me in school no if only you listen to the person that god used to say go to this church you would have found somebody who would have sponsored you it is your refusal because you never believe that there are people kind enough to sponsor you without strings attached and your imbalance did not allow you to tap into that dimension tonight i want us to start with a prayer of repentance lord forgive me for trivializing your other dimensions scattered across the body thank you for what you have shown me as a man of god 
Lord forgive me for insulting business people forgive me for calling prosperous people wasters of your time Lord I forgive me for calling prayer warriors hungry noisemakers forgive me for insulting deliverance forgive me for insulting the prophetic I ask for mercy for insulting people who transform the mind in the place of prayer forgive me for thinking those who are the, the personal development experts are useless to your agenda forgive my ignorance that has come through imbalance this imbalance has cheated me and my life has lost the flavor that should be go ahead and pray the reason why i am not blessing all things is because imbalance has pegged a dimension of god from my life if i opened up myself to the healing ministry i would have carried that healing anointing my church would have been a church that experienced his healing i rejected the prophetic and now confusion is destroying my life lord i ask for mercy i've exaggerated the prophetic and i've left the word of god now i've gotten into witchcraft and error i've become a slave to prophets have mercy on me and let me return back to the world I've been so obsessed with power and signs and wonders that there is no place for spiritual growth being grounded and established in the word of God. All I look for now is power. Lord, have mercy. Take away that imbalance from my life. Outside, make sure you are praying everywhere. Pray. The error, the danger, the destructive calamity that imbalance brings. Lord, I've ignored the anointing and all I do is just an empty theological Bible study without the power, without grace. So my church, my business, my family has no genuine anointing. Lord, I open up myself to the dimension of authentic power. Lord, I rejected excellence. I thought it was just about prayer and Bible study. And healing the sick I rejected excellence now all my TV programs are not accepted because they don't match a level of excellence I have wasted resources because of lack of excellence there are certain partners and helpers that excellence would have drawn to my ministry but lack of excellence threw, threw them away I received that dimension pray hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray there is not maybe not in koinonia but i observe the body of christ and i see a widespread of prayerlessness people don't pray again pray for me that's the language of people oh you are going for please pray for us so oh. and people don't pray you know why because in a bid to balance this we have insulted every prayer warrior insulted anyone any church that prays just, these are just noise makers it's all about money and we have found out that there is no sensitivity in the body no discernment people don't pray people don't travel gone are the days when you see people lock themselves somewhere and cry to the god of heaven now people fast and all they just want cheap things oh man of god let me sow a seed just touch my head there are some things it's not just by impartation you must stay and cry upon the horns of the altar till something falls upon you from heaven we are going to pray one prayer and say lord what dimension is needed for my next level open me up unto it oh god lift your voice and pray lord if it is the prophetic that will take me to my next season then i open up my spirit for it if it's the miraculous that will take me to the next dimension if it's a healthy mental transformed mind lord i receive that dimension i will pray in please if it's a restoration of fire upon my altar that is the requirement for the next dimension i receive it if it's the knowledge of administration and excellence that I need Lord balance my life Lord balance my life balance my church balance my business
Balance my understanding. Balance my life. Balance my life. Take away from me the sarcasm for prophets. Take away the sarcasm for Bible study. Take away the sarcasm for prayer. Take away the sarcasm for diligence. And Lord, let me incorporate these dimensions as coming from you. Hallelujah. Listen to me, we're rounding up. There are very anointed people, very anointed people who don't know how to speak before great men. Because to them, every gathering of people is a church service. And then God sends you now to your destiny helper and you don't know how to speak. And they throw you away back to the prison. Although you can interpret dreams, you didn't understand the protocol of sin Pharaoh because you ignored the person who can teach you how to communicate. So you find out that the ministries never cross Nigeria because no other region can accept you. You have not been trained to understand global leadership and you don't know how to synergize spirituality with people's culture. You travel to another person's culture, they jail you as a man of God because you do not understand the terms. There are other ministries that the revelation God is giving them should go to the whole earth. But your resentment for wealth has kept you poor. And so nobody can hear your voice. No tapes, no books, no nothing. Because prosperity that will give it wings is not there. I can look at a congregation and tell in a split second the dimension they are ignoring. Because I see prayer warriors who the the oldest person there may be 60 years no car no house no school fees the moment they are driving children from school fees is all is all the prayer warriors children that return back home because they have ignored it now let me tell you something about imbalance your imbalance makes you represent misrepresent god to your territory because they are depending unbelievers are depending on the idea you give them about god make sure you give them a balanced perception don't present to them a God who empowers people and removes prosperity. Don't present to them a God who all that he does is to give them money and their spiritual lives. They are not saved. They are not born again. They are going to hell, but they have money. That's a misrepresentation. Don't present to them a man of God that is anointed, anointed, and there's no room to teach the word. So you have a congregation of members that never grow. You have occultists in churches and they never, never grow. They don't understand the principles. They destroy their homes. Half of a church is divorced with people because the teaching ministry, there is no teaching priest. There is power, but there is no wisdom to share the ministry that keeps homes together. Are we together? Or you can have a crowd of people who never pray. The prayer warrior in that whole church prays only for one hour. Because that dimension has been ignored. We are going to pray one last prayer. Balance my life. Balance my life. Lift your voice and cry. Balance my life. Lord, I receive leadership. Lord, I receive prayer. Lord, I, see, I receive wisdom through the word. Lord, I receive favor. Lord, I receive excellence. Lord, I receive the warfare dimension. I receive the prophetic. I receive the deliverance dimension of the world. Every provision that the grace of God affords, even if it is not working in my life, I am open-minded towards the body. No criticism and no resentment. I repent from criticizing any and every man of God regardless of the limitations i open myself to the multifaceted dimensions of god resident within his ecclesia i receive the dimension that brings speed i receive the dimension that brings establishment i receive the dimension that brings glory i receive the dimension that brings increase i receive are you praying 
Lord, until now, I've not seen the need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I thought it was just something for Pentecostals. But right now, I open my spirit to receive. It's a dimension needed in my life. In your name, we will rise. I don't know. You reign in your name. Let me add one more prayer. Lord, put a dimension of love for the body in me. Love, love. When there is no love, criticism will remain. When there is no love, sarcasm and resentment will remain. Open your mouth and cry. Love for the body. Love for every church. Love for every man of God. Regardless of their dimensions regardless of their limitations regardless of their imperfections lord we embrace them we love them if they are part of the body they are the beloved lift your voice no longer will i resent any man of god no longer will i resent any church no longer will i resent any fellowship any gathering of believers my propositions against them may be legitimate, but it still is not enough reason. Even if you are not part of them, wish them well. Even if you are not part of that church, wish them well. Even if you are not part of that prayer group, wish them well. Even if you are not part of that Christian organization, wish them well. You are not part of the mission agents, wish them well. Talk well about them. Talk well about their leaders. Hallelujah. I never fight physically. Physical battles are the last. It is foolish to begin your journey to victory fighting physically. Look at Jesus. On his way to the cross, he spent time in Gethsemane because he knew it was not about wood and nails. It was about spirits. Satan came to him in Matthew chapter 3, Matthew chapter 4. Satan left him, came back to him in Peter. He defeated him, came back in Judas. He left him. Something was playing out. And Jesus knew that he needed to settle certain things. When he went to that cross, Satan did not know that certain dimensions of priesthood the order the protocol of priesthood had been kept let me tell you fear any man that understands priesthood even if he's a herbalist are you getting what i'm saying the people in the world know this and they triumph from one level of victory there are business people in this nation that will never do anything until they make sure there is an ordinance of priesthood that goes ahead of them life is too fierce to be physical no sir are we together you try getting a baby physically it doesn't work you go to the hospital doctors do their best it doesn't work you try and try let me tell you when you try a thing once twice three times it doesn't work just stop stop wasting your time stop immediately the bible did not tell us that one person was killed when jericho fell the people the same spirit that fell the land rendered the people helpless even the weakest of the members of the army killed somebody it was never about the sword it was about victory when the ark wins you win the only possibility for your failure is that the priesthood is not there show me the priesthood that has risen to speak over the ordinances our forefathers as uneducated as they were they understood the mystery of priesthood 
till today many of them we laugh at them yet they keep getting results everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored Listen, unto me the bible says everything written in scripture was for our learning that story was not just written there god intended that someone with the eyes of the spirit can see and teach a people that you don't win battles with swords swords only help you possess your possession swords only help you manifest victory they don't create victory what creates victory brothers and sisters is the priesthood and the ark what manifests victory is your sword it is true that the horse is prepared for battle but the horse does not fight until the priesthood goes the nation of israel will be going for war and they will carry swords and then they will carry priests with a trumpet look how silly it is to be going to fight they can wipe a whole nation yet there are some people with some irritating regalia and the painful part is they are never behind they are in front the priesthood they are afraid but they know what they carry they depend on the ark left for me you will kill me and the enemies are laughing and say you have come to fight us like this priesthood our generation is a very arrogant generation that's why we may never get results many young people just i'm not saying anything is wrong with intellectualism we have so we have demeaned ourselves from the reality of the realm of the spirit do you know you look at certain people and you are even annoyed because in all honesty you see the efforts i'm correcting you now you have been doing it wrongly you have been fighting a neighbor even if the neighbor leaves provided jericho is there it doesn't matter who comes back the battle is the same listen if jericho is still there leave zaria and travel to lagos leave zaria and go to us right from the 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 airport there trouble will meet you but crumble jericho and remain in your village and watch the booty of jericho look for you and come it is not by strength it is by strategy i show you a strategy tonight to command strange signs and wonders is the mystery of the priesthood do you know do you know why saul lost his throne are we bible students do you know why saul lost his throne who can tell me why he lost his throne saul did not lose his throne necessarily just because he offended god saul lost his throne because he, of, he offended a pattern an order of operation he waited there was a man occupying the priest prophet office who was supposed to be the one to offer incense and they waited for him and the king said look you are wasting our time the people are destroying me say ah is he not the same god we all serve the same god and he offered the sacrifice and when samuel came he said no you have done foolishly if you allowed me to come god would have established your throne forever but now that you have done this the throne is taken away from you just for the sin of violating priesthood a man lost his throne without knife no knife nobody fought him but he lost his throne david tried to do his best to still respect him he was sitting in a physical throne yet he had gotten up in the realm of the spirit show me the job in the realm of the spirit otherwise stop wasting your time with cvs around it will not work are you getting what i'm saying you just get up physically and go and harass your unbelieving loved ones I've come to you repent you must repent you are fighting physically and all of a sudden you receive casualties 
but when you invoke priesthood someone goes to bed in the night and sees a stranger coming and says it's time for your salvation and the person is already convicted here you come and you say look i want to talk to you about he helps you and say jesus i've been waiting because jericho has fallen are we together you meet your destiny helper jericho covers his eyes he is the one but he cannot see you and you pass but when jericho falls like the prodigal son as prodigal as that son was while the father saw him the father didn't even say so what have you been doing i hear you have been with pigs he held him he said leave the matter of the past now let me put a ring come be restored for by the arm of flesh koinonia will no man prevail you will never get a job just by physical pressing believe me you will never prosper just by doing all of these things there are many men of god some of you are here wonderful men of god they are trying to win the battle and rise in ministry physically please invite me here's my complimentary card i'm a sound man of god by god's grace i'm balanced i'm this and that and that you are and jericho is looking at you and say it doesn't happen that way jesus knew this imagine jesus going around and saying people come and listen to me for 30 years no one was interested in listening to him but when he engaged the mystery of the priesthood he came out of the waters a voice spoke hear ye him publicity or no publicity everywhere jesus went men followed him are we are we together the bible says they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness let me tell you many of you your victory is already established in the realm of the spirit but the system for translating it we are there wasting time doing a lot of things many of our loved ones some of you are here you thought that okay by the time you get a job it will be all right you got a job you found out that the salary was not enough you prayed for promotion as promotion came to you all of a sudden jericho says that's not how we win i'm still here standing but tonight in the name of jesus in the name of jesus christ let me tell you you will watch jericho just like babylon fall before you it's true listen when you hear people testifying ah uh, try to understand what made the miracle work because most of what they were doing they had done it before master we have toiled all night jesus said no it's not net that catches fish Abba, you've been with me you don't understand how this thing works master we have toiled all night he said but i know there is a relationship between you and that fish and Jesus said, cast your net. The net will be casted, but not before he speaks. It is after he speaks. The CV will be submitted, but not before the priesthood. It is after. Are we together? You will try to have the child. But when you continue the way you are doing, you will keep miscarrying forever. It's not an insult. Let me tell you this. Without the presence of God, there is no human intelligence that has the fortification to destroy an altar whose foundation is spiritual. Let me repeat myself. Without the presence of God, spiritual intelligence, there is no human manipulation that sustains enough power to crumble an altar whose origin is from the realm of the spirit. What is fighting many of us it's not physical brothers and sisters i know you are born again i know you love jesus christ but the mystery of covenants are territorial jesus has come to your heart but he must come to your life just because you received him into your heart doesn't automatically mean you are free potentially you have come into a kingdom with infinite possibilities but Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, having their understanding darkened. This is Paul teaching the church in Ephesus. He says, alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Having the, the tragedy is not that God lied, 
but that their understanding is darkened and so by reason of the darkened understanding they have been alienated from the experience of that life it's not enough to say jesus died it's not enough to say i'm born again if that were it brothers and sisters many of our loved ones who have been born again for decades should not be where they were i watch people under the influence of manipulations that are not of an earthly at earthly origin and i watch the folly of men how we do our best i was once like that but no more i'm born again i've repented i've seen the foolishness of fighting things physically it has to be from the realm of the spirit first not from the realm of the spirit whether first or not the order is first from the realm of the spirit when you plant a seed it doesn't start growing outside until the growth happens there that is the part you cannot explain when it starts coming out you can now water it but the growth there doesn't need your watering listen there are powers that until the mystery of the priesthood and the ark fights some of us will never experience progress in our lives we wake up in the morning we sleep late in the night we are sincere but nothing is working are we together yes every time a blessing comes trouble must ferment itself around a family and drain everything the moment you are rising spiritually how many pastors and churches and wonderful people are like that when you are rising satan doesn't fight you you would think you are victorious the programming he knows how cheap the programming will bring you down so he can as well allow you to rise and you find out for a season everything is working well because it's like a string you will reach a limit it pulls you back are we together oh i want to marry you no problem you will even be happy three days later everything scatters i'm going to give you a job and you find out that satan does not need to fight you he already fought you with the presence of jericho and god said guys the goal is not to stay in jericho but you can't let jericho stand and reach where you are going don't pity it bring it down there is a don't just look at the fence there are captives in that place there are treasures in that place and he said let me show you it is not by physical fighting you don't have any physical weapon that can bring down that fence brothers and sisters jericho sank flat the bible records it flat this is what is going to happen to many of us tonight that's why that's why i i told you tonight's miracle service is not just for individuals it's for families enough of this fruitless trying doing everything by strength there is a system in the kingdom are we together the priesthood there are some of us here where ministry some of us probably travel for a long time we are men of god we love god but it looks like there is a peg brothers and sisters let jericho crumble and you will see how cheap life can be there are people who have experienced the defeat of jericho but they cannot articulate the system that brought the defeat someone stood on their behalf through the ministry of intercession and caused jericho to fall for them they just found out that they entered cheaply and even a dagger brought victory so they can trivialize the existence of jericho jericho is real if you don't see it in your life a priesthood already brought it down for you are you hearing what i'm saying but everyone who must pass remember israel is god's own people what is the business between israel and Jer they had conquered other nations what do they need the treasures of jericho when you read your bible with an open heart you will see that there are gaps you have to be spiritual to get an explanation i fight i defeat jericho and i continue my journey but i carry rehab i carry treasures there is rehab there without rehab there is no jesus without rehab the whole fight was to carry treasures and to carry rehab hmm. 
We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever, Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. soon going to pray the Lord rejects Saul as a king and now looks at David but there was no priest to confirm what God wanted the priest that was available still wanted Saul and David could not be king God Almighty had left Saul and wanted David Samuel said no I still want Saul and God remained helpless. Think about it. God kept begging Samuel, cooperate with me because David will never be king. That God intended it does not guarantee his manifestation. Between God's heart and your result is a priest carrying the ark. That's why you can have a dream. You see yourself collecting a, a job letter you saw it in 2014, no priest. 2015, no priest. That your dreams show you Eden. Your life shows you Adulam. There's a system of translation. Are we together? Now all of a sudden, the Lord now spoke to Samuel. He didn't quarrel Samuel. He said, Samuel, how long will you keep weeping seeing that i have rejected saul as king rise up carry your horn go to the house of jesse go and anoint the next king of israel paraphrasing and david remained there i'm sure david will be in the wilderness and say when will my change come the change was in a negotiation between god god already intended in god's mind this is the next king and the king will sit with sheep and say, Oh Lord, when will my breakthrough come? And God will say, The day a priest comes. All of a sudden, the priest agrees and God's will continues moving. A priest refuses and God remains. Moses was wise. He said, Lord, I already know you too well. Don't ever let us go here if your presence... If that I could not go before us, I'm not going, no. Moses said, because my going is as good as wasting my time. I, I, I know what is before us. And he said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Rest is a gift. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Rest is a gift. My presence will go with you. And I, through my presence, will give you rest. My presence will clear up the spirits. And whatever you do. When you read 2 Chronicles 20, the same thing happened. Three kings came together to defeat the people of God. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, the priests and the musicians were now in front. And they began to sing. You are good and your mercies endure forever. The ark started fighting them. Who is the fool that goes for war with gold in his pocket and silver? And the Bible says all of a sudden they turn. Can you imagine allies together? When the ark starts fighting for you, is fearful. Are we together? Fearful. You are standing close to danger. It never touches you. Before it touches you, something touches it. The priesthood.
the people started killing themselves and the bible says everyone helped to kill another that's not a man fighting that's the ark fighting and all of a sudden when the last two were left he killed one and the ark said well, what are you waiting for and he carried the knife killed himself and when the people came they found gold they found treasures when the ark fights it fights thoroughly when you fight if your hand paints you like moses and start going down you see that they can defeat you but you carry the ark and let it begin to fight they kept the ark and they kept dagon these people brought an entity a god enshrined with spirits called dagon the bible did not show us there were any physical contact by morning dagon fell face forward on the ground the superiority of the presence of god above any enchantment and any ordinance when you see the ordinances that have been enshrined by your cultism and all of these things prevail is because the ark has not been lifted tonight we have come in this place to initiate a system of priesthood over the difficult situations of people to say lord if i want you for a few minutes just suspend the issue of job or whatever whether it is job or the issue of delay it is still the same jericho causing it any part of jericho is still jericho are you hearing what i'm saying the jericho that causes failure is the same Jericho that causes barrenness. It is still Jericho. The Bible didn't say Jericho. Do you know, look at the interesting thing. Jericho fell flat, but the woman who stayed in the fence, how God delivered her that she didn't fall flat with it is a mystery we don't understand. But the Bible tells us everything fell down flat. To break every chain, Break every chain. 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 It's to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Listen. Brothers and sisters, we're about to pray. But I plead with you in the name of the Lord to believe this mystery, as simple as it looks. And you will watch the wonder in your life. Stop focusing on physical things. You will cheat yourself a thousand times. Nothing on earth has the ability to stand on its own. If anything on earth stands, there is a force keeping it. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Listen, the type of sword that kills the enemies is not as important when Jericho is down. Anything can bless you when the realm of the spirit is down. Listen. I have seen anointed men and women of God. People I know love God with all their heart. But they can never prevail in ministry. Because they have been fighting physically. They do everything. And sometimes you wonder and say, ah, look how great this brother is. Look how great this sister is. Is there no ear on earth to hear what you carry and honor you for it? Hallelujah. Listen. People make all kinds of gifts for me, as you can imagine. People make all kinds of gifts. And sometimes I see what people do, and I'm shocked. I say, life is so unfair. How can this brother, this sister be this gifted, and yet be begging? 
and you see someone come out from somewhere and priesthood goes before him and in one week his life has changed they can even be sarcastic priesthood will make them take life for granted there is a system of ease that God wants to bring to your life please hear me there are families here listening you have done all you know why don't you allow God allow the ark come into your home tonight and let it go round Jericho allow the ark come into your life tonight let it go round Jericho and you will watch that which was dead come alive by itself hallelujah I was told recently about a young man very nice wonderful young man who loves God everything you know in life including good things fight him and recently I think something happened they stole a phone and the person who stole the phone was within the vicinity of the guy and he was sitting down the man kept the phone there and police came and took two of them together I got a text the person sent me a text and when he narrated everything that was happening I usually don't call people back but I was touched I called him I said where are you he said apostle look at my life nothing works I said how did you get to the police station he said that um, they found somebody with phone and carried him you think that's ordinary maybe that young man breakthrough is coming for him another thief from somewhere steals comes to drop a phone close to you does the police not have common sense to probe and they carry you together because there is a spirit coordinating this it looks like coincidence someone just falls from a chair just a little chair like this and all of a sudden one side of him paralyzes it's a lie it's not that chair that paralyzed him be smart people fell from trees plucking mangoes and they were fine they cleaned their hands and carried the mango and went away you fall from a small chair and paralyzes your leg no a, a coincidence navigated the chair was just the scapegoat it's not about the chair tonight we are going to pray before i begin to minister you are going to say satan so you have deceived me through this situation i've been focusing on the situation whereas it is never really about the situation it is about jericho attempting to stand and challenge me i thought it was all about job i thought it was all about marriage i thought it was all about children i thought it was all about my background now i'm learning that anything would have still caused the same problem provided jericho is standing there but joshua gather the priests gather the priests listen look at me i want you in the mind of your spirit look at that job issue look at that issue and say I will no longer be deceived you are not the problem the problem is jericho it is never that the business cannot work it is never that helpers cannot come once jericho is still standing here nothing can go in nothing can come out lift your voice and begin Everywhere on that 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Self tell me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout it one more time in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I challenge. I challenge the spirits. The spirit. The ordinances. The ordinances. The spiritual forces. The spiritual forces that are responsible. That are responsible for the physical tragedies in my life. Physical tragedies by the mystery of the blood. By the mystery of the blood. I declare. I declare that victory must be established tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible tells us, listen, that we have a high priest and that that high priest is a man. The man, Jesus, he qualifies to be a priest, not the spirit, Jesus. The man occupying a priesthood that is higher than the Aaronic priesthood. The Bible says his priesthood is of a better covenant after the order of Melchizedek. A priesthood with no beginning, a priesthood with no end. That there is that eternal priesthood of Jesus. Listen carefully. We are talking about very deep foundational issues here. Jesus, the man, the priest that took his blood. The Bible tells us that he went to the heavenly tabernacle and poured his blood upon that altar once and for all. Once and for all. The advocacy of that priesthood is superior. Listen. Every enchantment and every divination on earth needs the sun to walk or the moon the bible says thou listen without the sun and the moon if god withdraws the sun and the moon every cause every altar dies immediately because every other priesthood on earth or cultic depends on the power of the sun or the moon Are we together? And so the Bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight. You will not need it. The moon, the sun and moon, they are important. But I'm introducing something. Jehovah, God himself, will be the light that sponsors your altar. The same way, listen, listen. That men can say we will do the sacrifice by 12 p.m. When there is a full moon and they stand and manipulate the the they use geometry and everything to tap the powers of the sun and the moon and god says these things are inferior i come with another priesthood my own self the son of righteousness i am the light are we together i want you to be tired of what is happening in your life and family i tell you the truth when we begin to pray and i begin to minister many of you will see cheap victories cheap victories. amen this is when you will know that this thing is not just about physical efforts do you know brothers and sisters listen let me teach you something for as long as you keep focusing on individual physical problems, your frustration continues. I can tell you all of them are sponsored by a central force. Hear me. 
all of them the same electricity is causing this fan to run the same electricity is causing the mic to work if you want a shutdown of the source of the power you can destroy the mic the phone will still work that's what we have come to do tonight a total shutdown then you will find out it was never a financial issue you will find out it was never a health issue it was never a promotion issue it was an altar issue it was an ordinance issue pray one prayer before i start ministry lord visit the foundation of every challenge in my life and my family lift your voice and pray everyone that asks can receive it lord visit the foundation why is ministry not working why is my spiritual life dying why am i not growing in the anointing what is the mystery oh god lord why the cycle of tragedies one tragedy after another one tragedy hallelujah 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 please just just be silent for a moment i want to start ministering now let's just the lord is giving me instructions just just be silent stand where you are um something is happening inside outside everywhere the lord is showing me something very strange now um let me just describe what i'm seeing i'm seeing something that looks like um this thing people wear what's the name this thing that looks like a um, ladies thing that men wear that that looks like a yes that that thing that's what i'm seeing on many people and the lord is telling me on everyone that i see that thing in there is a very strange deliverance because that i'm hearing hidden glory and i want to pray please you don't don't shout don't do anything just let me flow you start bringing those people out i'm going to pray now for those group of people i'm seeing it because i'm seeing that those people no matter what you do your glory is never seen you will struggle and try but nothing ever happens now in the name of jesus I stretch my hands just silence everywhere father i'm seeing this in the realm of the spirit and tonight is a miracle service from overflow one two three and the main auditorium and those online anyone here that is a victim of this that i see by the power of priesthood i come as an ark bearer an envoy tonight and lord i decree and declare let there be deliverance now right now right now right now bring them out i prophesy i decree and declare many of you will feel that physical fire upon your head i'm praying now physical fire coming upon your head let them go let them go i command liberty they must go i come with the rod of a higher priesthood i decree and declare they must go free Restore their glory now. Jacos kapatariata and teketa kaskotariata ji. Brakatoka tabalia. Hidden glory. That's what I hear in the spirit. Hidden glory. Hidden glory. There is glory, but covered in Jericho. Covered by the fence of Jericho. Hakapata kato sabra katalia. Everywhere, inside, outside. I'm praying now. Please just be sensitive. Let's let's do what God is directing us to do. Tonight there must be total victory. Total victory. Now I'm praying for families. The anointing of God will come on individuals, but it is for families. It will come on you. Once that anointing comes on you now, know that God is visiting your family. Lord, I pray now. I release the sword the sword of the lord 
in the name of Jesus to every family if there is a family here whose glory has been buried nobody rises where are they I decree and declare now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost Shakata Barakata I don't know what altar manipulated the glory of any family here but in the name of Jesus the son of the living God in the name of Jesus I command now by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be emancipation emancipation for every family hidden glory hidden glory the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and then we beheld his glory the Lord is still touching people the Lord is still touching people Shabakatu Kadusha that's why you came you have done the listening let me pray now Zepos Kabarakatosia Malakasia Embrekete Kotosula Brahasadi Alash Hallelujah lift your hands something serious is going to happen here now now I want to pray a very serious prayer the Lord is leading me to pray this prayer I just had in my spirit altars of poverty hold on just keep your hands lifted father I'm praying you spoke to my ears altars of poverty if there is any family here in an ordinance she case katash under that cause nothing works there is nothing you do physically to be able to bless the family and support the family that works in the name of jesus i declare right now by the fire of the holy ghost let there be deliverance now by the fire of the holy ghost by the fire of the holy ghost altars of poverty everywhere overflow one overflow two overflow three online if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose family is under this siege i decree and declare now your emancipation comes tonight for all of you in front here i speak to the spirits you know my voice in the name of jesus and at the count of three you let them go now one two three go go out of them now out of every one of their destinies out of their lives Shekatos kabariata i invoke a priesthood higher than any ordinance upon their lives release their families now release their destinies now You know the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing a vision now you know how it used to be in a slave market that you sell a physical person and collect money that's what i'm seeing in the spirit like people with only trousers sold and money this is exchange of destinies i believe that this is very prophetic let me be honest i know some of you may not believe it but the destiny you are living is not your own a king slaughtered his son so that he will remain alive there are men that exchange destinies they they a king carried his future and said child the death i'm supposed to die you die it there are people like that the destiny god allocated for you you know this is not your life your dreams and your vision show something else in the name of jesus pray now lift your hands i declare the spirit that exchange and merchandise the destinies of men by the power of the holy ghost 
at the count of three if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose destiny has been manipulated i command now at the count of three be set free one two three be free now be free now be free now everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me hallelujah Oh, Sephia, 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 like Sephia. I'm hearing a name, Sephia. Who is that? Please, let's let's hurry up. There is a lot to do. I want us to settle down. Really pray for the sick, Sephia. Who is that? Arise, Hamala manane na na matia. Arise, arise. Your name is Sephia. How about you, Madam? The Lord will locate the person. I'm standing here and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord touching the person God wants me to speak to. Arise. Arise. I'll pray for all of you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I deliver this lady now. This lady on red. I command that spirit that has tied down your life and your glory be gone. For you, it's over now. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be set free right now. Sephia, the Lord bring liberty, liberty. Now, I command those altars to leave you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, bad luck, bad luck. I take it out of your life. The spirit of, I'm seeing a lot of bad luck. I take it out of your life now. Release their destinies now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There is a lady. A physical person appeared to you in the room. This is a woman whose face you know like a relative. Physically. Where is that person please? Someone you were not dreaming. Appeared to you. And there was a conversation from that day. Your life never became the same. Please don't be ashamed. I want to pray for you please don't waste our time we have a lot to do the lord is ministering to me someone appeared i'm not saying you were in a dream this thing is somewhere you had a conversation with someone physical who is that person i want to pray for you please when you find that person let the person come quickly who is ola i'm hearing a name ola ola i don't know if that's the full name but there's ola ola there's someone with that name, Ola. Please don't come out if it's not your name. Who is this? Huh? Your name is Ola. I want to pray for you. Look at me. Rejoice. Breakthrough has come to your family. This lady. I'm, I'm Kai. Look at the evil and the witchcraft I see over this lady's family. All these people are, please help me find out. Why are they here? All of them, their names are Ola. Interesting. Come. That lady with cap, come. Your salvation has come. Come. This lady with, lift your hands. Over now. Over now. Over now. Calm down. Madam, come. I'm seeing what happened. Yes. A woman appeared to me that it shall be never would be with physical physically are you seeing what i'm saying look at this when was that last year may she appeared face to face and tell me it shall never will be well with you no matter how whatever you take that you are not feeling fine the medicine will not work and from that hold on from that day something started moving in your body yes, yes. it will move and come to your back and come to your chest area look at this are you seeing a swelling here you are seeing this 
a woman appears to her i prophesy to someone here jacques koto parakatia empreketoso bataria talikata anyone in fraternity with the realm of darkness over your life i curse those people now i curse those people now i curse those people now by the anointing of the holy ghost madam i deliver you now in the name of jesus christ be set free now in the name of jesus the living and the dead don't have anything in common in the name of jesus the lord is speaking to me there are some of you all you see is dead people all you see is no matter a bulk of your sleep is encounter with dead people i'm prophesying lift your hands the anointing of the spirit is coming on such people now in the name of jesus if there is anyone here in strange encounters with the dead by the fire of the holy ghost i command a separation now the spirit of hades i speak to you the spirit of hades christ has triumphed over you oh death take away your sting take away your sting hallelujah there are a number of you here i presume you are all ola including this gentleman on wheelchair that's your son that's your brother what happened to him what happened to him accident since when 2015 and he paralyzed you you can't move now oh dear we are going to pray for the sick but i want to pray for ola now just just stand bring for me the person i'm seeing like a sword coming on one of you now aside from this lady there is there is an anointing coming on one of you let me speak to that one person right now i'm seeing a closed door this is someone's destiny it looks like i'm holding the air but i'm seeing that i'm holding a padlock in the spirit whose destiny is that among these people standing open 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 now i command that destiny open open now open now open now open now in the name of jesus hallelujah you came alone hold on hold on hold on don't worry i'll pray for the sick sir if i'm if i don't talk are you a last sir no don't don't come out until i ask you this is witchcraft you would have died since last year june yes sir it's god that kept you i will pray for you i've seen your case already if i don't pray for you in three months you will not be walking again this is stroke what is wrong with you yes all my body this is what i'm saying i'm seeing three months and you're on the bed not to rise again we have to pray this is witchcraft in the name of jesus christ i want to pray for you come my dear this lady i'm seeing a very beautiful lady in the physical in the realm of the spirit i'm seeing an old woman hold my hands what fellowship the exchangers of destiny i hold the hands of this lady and i declare right now in the name of jesus let there be a restoration a very beautiful girl in the physical but i'm seeing the face of an old woman be free now in the name of jesus i command the power of the holy ghost upon your life i command that your destiny be restored your destiny be restored in the name of jesus christ for all of you standing here my, my brother this gentleman come what's your name what do you do what do you do i'm a printer sir you are what printer printer nothing is working in your life i need to pray for you in the name of jesus christ i pray by the anointing of the holy spirit i break this embargo i see upon your hand in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ this row i'm seeing deliverance chicken feather that's what i'm seeing chicken feather this is an ordinance over a family just this row i stretch my hands now in the name of jesus i stretch my hands let there be emancipation right now 
in the name of Jesus Christ let there be emancipation right now in the name of Jesus Christ all right mama I know that it's not time to pray but I want to pray for you please come madam you came alone let her come you came alone I, I did my fault and my heart has been here so one of my son friend brought me here when you are talking everything you say is just about as if you are where, where did you come together. from i come from uh, samaru from but, samaru um, Basawa. no problem mama yes, I, I want to pray for you because of something i've thank seen thank you jesus thank you Lord. say after me say in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. The suffering. The suffering. The sorrow. The sorrow. In my life. In my life. Must end. Must end. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will eat. I will eat. The fruit of my labor. The fruit of my labor. Father, by her confession, Amen. let her be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that captivity is over. I pray for all of you now. In the name of Jesus. My dear, don't be embarrassed, eh? Be careful with men. Come. I'm seeing somebody really destroying your life. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? You are here. We love you. We don't condemn people. But be careful. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. The deception and the wickedness of evildoers. I pray for you now. Every captivity in our last family, whether male or female, as I stretch my hands over you, I command that it leaves you now. It leaves your family now. I say it again it leaves you now it leaves your family now in the name of Jesus for the last time now an anointing will come on you it leaves you now it leaves your family now in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you please go back to your seat go back to your seat go back to your seat hallelujah now lift your hands everybody gentlemen when it's time to pray for the sick we'll pray for you well huh? just be patient please help him so that he doesn't strain himself all of you lift your hands one scripture and there is fire to deliver the oppressed now why are you here my dear you are with him oh is your daddy what okay since then there is something that's been working on his body like you had an accident leg. yes sir okay and what happened and since then something has been working on his body on his stomach like snake at times the thing will are you seeing what i'm saying so it was never about accident you see accident was just the condition that made this happen i saw three months stroke hitting this man and him not standing up from the bed again but the lord will destroy it eh? just be patient we want to pray now let me show you one scripture and then we'll pray exodus chapter 15 quickly please 6 to 11 exodus 15 we're going to do a quick walk we need to cast out wicked devils out of lives and families thy right hand O lord is become glorious in power thy right hand O lord has dashed into pieces the enemy next verse to 11 and in the greatness of thy excellency thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee thou sentest forth thy wrath which consumed them as stubble and with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together the flood stood up right as an heap and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea to 11 the enemy said i will pursue i will overtake i will divide the spoil my lust shall be satisfied upon them i will draw up my sword my hand shall destroy them next verse thou didst blow with thy wind and the sea covered them they sank as lead in the mighty water who is like unto thee O god among the gods who is like unto thee glorious in holiness comma fearful in praises doing not delivering doing wonders that's what you're about to see now lift your hands he said i will pursue i will overtake my lost my desire will fall upon the people of god i want to pray listen deliverance is not just about falling down and rolling up and down is 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 bringing the anointing of the spirit to bring a pattern a separation 
the bible says the river separated teeth and heather separation to allow you move i want to pray are you ready now remember that after they moved the seventh time it was a shout the healer a shout not just any shout a shout that was sent like a word and the bible says the walls of jericho fell down flat that shout is what you are about to do but let me issue a command in the spirit in the name of jesus christ the one whom i serve and whose i am in the name of jesus i declare over every force in the spirit the covenants and the ordinances of darkness that have held the lives of god's people as they shout this shout wherever they are i command those spirits he said when they hear my voice they will run out of their hiding i command not only an exposition but a total separation are you ready to shout jesus at the count of three one two three in the name of jesus i command that fire to fall every power every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment go now go now go now every enchantment every enchantment every enchantment be free now hold on hallelujah i usually don't do this until i'm directed hallelujah i usually see pillars of fire standing by my left and right i just want to pass through you don't have to touch me except it is not god that has called this meeting if there is a force and a spirit it must be exposed as i pass you in the name of jesus thank you father i decree and declare right now by the anointing of the holy ghost every power every force every power every force every power every force you must go now now by the anointing of the holy ghost in the name of jesus as i pass you that anointing like fire is coming upon you to set you free be free now free now free now free now in the name of jesus be free now in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ those of you outside lift your hands lift your hands i'm going to pass here right now the anointing of the spirit is going to begin to come upon you are you ready now thank you jesus you don't have to touch me just just allow me pass be careful be careful father in jesus name let it be over now there is fire now that fire is moving all across now in the name of jesus ordinances be broken now i'm seeing fire just around here where my hands are in the name of jesus let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now be free now let it be over now 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 in the name of jesus christ be free now in the name of jesus as i'm passing close to you an anointing is causing every power let them go the spirit of the lord is telling me to stand here right now in jesus name let there be deliverance now let there be deliverance now from every force of darkness every force of every force of darkness be free now i came here because i know that there are so many of you look the crowd in this place i want to pray for you i'm standing here my god look at the oppression that i see just standing here i'm about to pray right now and from the front to the back from the left to the right i want all of you to shout jesus something is leaving people already are you ready now your destiny must be open please don't take it for granted bring them out now at the count of three overflow three one two three 
be free now be free now in the name of jesus i command my god please help them jesus christ look what is happening here from the front to the back right now anyone here under the siege of darkness be free now be free now help them be free now lift your hands overflow three i'm praying for you are you ready to shout jesus again there are many of you you try to move forward but the force keeps holding you as you shout jesus now you're going to see something leave you are you ready father all those who have been held captive i declare that as they shout jesus let your fire of deliverance come upon them one two three i release you now i release you now i release you now go forward i release you now delay broken i release you now i release you now i release you now i release you now in the name of jesus hallelujah listen i'm going to pray for everybody but the lord is saying there are some of you here the call of god is upon your life but there are altars fighting you i'm about to release you oh god i'm seeing 17 one seven where are they oh god right now to the back where are they they have the call of god but an altar of darkness tying down their lives Mata soto kata be free now hallelujah i'm going to pray for you look up please there are 11 of you the lord is saying it is you that you will use to help your family and the anointing that anointing of that joseph's anointing to distinguish you is coming on 11 people lord where are they to the back right to the back that anointing a destiny is rising no even if you are the last born i decree and declare let that anointing find you now let that anointing find you now the joseph anointing the joseph anointing that will cause you to save your brethren hallelujah please lift your hands overflow three it's not about falling down although there are several things happening here but i want you to just focus the last prayer i want to pray for you many of you will be surprised what happens to you listen i'm seeing keys like a key that was missing some of you were once you were destined for certain things and the devil veered off your life and as it is right now the treasure that god gave you you have lost it as i pray for you that restoration anointing is coming upon you some of you is anointings some of you is business connections lord where are they at the count of three let that fire come shout jesus at the count of three one two three receive that grace now restoration fire 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 shake up butter please open your mouth and begin to pray begin to pray begin to pray great grace great grace great grace great grace new season, new season. mama look at me it's over over forever over 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 it's going to use you the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ please everyone pray in the spirit. everyone pray in the spirit everyone pray in the spirit
everyone pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit please pray in the spirit pray in the spirit pray in the spirit overflow one pray in the spirit hallelujah praise the lord overflow one i want to minister to you now listen please i want you to believe everything i want to pray for you lift your hands all of you there are some of you here as i'm looking i'm just seeing chains i want to pray at the count of three i didn't come to waste your time right now that chain is going to leave people now anyone here under the sound of my voice and there is a chain of darkness overflow one i declare at the count of three right now let that chain be broken one two three i command that chain be broken now help them please be broken now to the back shakasko pariata zato kata be broken broken fire is coming i'm seeing fire moving across the crowd in the name of jesus christ i break every force every yoke of darkness hallelujah are you pregnant come i'm seeing an evil spirit let her go now in the name of jesus christ let her go by the anointing of the spirit i release the destiny of this baby you will not lose this baby in the name of jesus christ help her this lady lady praying in tongues in the name of jesus christ the grace for dreams and visions the lord is releasing it upon you great for dreams and visions hallelujah now i'm going to walk across this crowd please i just want you to release your faith release your faith and receive something now as i walk through i'm seeing altars and they are living right now thank you jesus father let there be deliverance right now right now right now right now right now let that fire as i move oh god let the angel of your presence move let there be deliverance it is over that's what the lord says to you over now in the name of jesus christ over 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 shabas kata jeketes kalabra katoziata kata over now in the name of jesus over by the anointing of the holy ghost it is over please believe as i'm passing you don't don't worry the anointing of god will locate you over now in the name of jesus christ let it be over now now over your life let it be over i'm seeing fire moving here like this who is that fire for in jesus name i stretch my hands let there be deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now mama be free now in the name of jesus christ supernatural deliverance um i'm seeing a circle here and the lord is saying restoration of ministerial anointing a circle lord where are they there are people here at least four of you i stretch my hands let the anointing locate you the call for ministry the call for ministry the call Parakato Sedekatoshia. Enter. Enter that level. That's what I hear in the spirit. Enter. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is? Is it victory or Victoria? I'm hearing a name it's like a victory or Victoria. Who is that? Please, very quickly, want to pray for the sick now. It's like you are wearing something like blue. Blue fish. Who is that person? What's your name, madam? Victoria. Yes, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. You've been coming. Madam, look at me. God is going to change your story. Completely. Amen. I don't know you, but yes. the Lord is saying he's bringing breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Hold my hands. Look at me. There is bad luck on your life, my dear. Good things come, but they never stay. And the Lord is saying to take it away right now. Be free. In the name of Jesus, I take away that spirit from your life. I set you free to move forward. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
And we go in who is Victoria again? All the victories of Victoria be made free right now in Jesus' name. Can we go in from here? Please, everyone, open your mouth and begin to pray. Prophesy. Say, in the name of Jesus, I'm breaking forth spiritually. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's a new level for me. It's a new level for me. Enter a new dimension. Enter a new dimension now. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands. I'm passing here now. There is an anointing. Move, move to the next level. I'm prophesying to everybody standing here within the vicinity of this anointing. Step into a new dimension. I release that grace now. I release that grace now. I stretch my hands. Everything that has held you down, let it leave you now. In the name of Jesus. My God, look at this. Are you seeing? The legs are rotting completely. In the name of Jesus, be free now. I command be free now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ look at me my dear go home and write it good news comes for me in 12 days Lord lose their destinies I'm standing here and I'm, there is an anointing let the destiny be open now open now Shaba Sokos Kaliata Embreketo Sasiketelikata Jekos Kadabalako Tesianabahasia. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm standing here and I'm hearing, I have called you, accept my call, accept my call, accept my call, accept my call. My call is upon your life, my call is upon your life stop fighting my call is upon your life that's what the spirit of god is saying my call is upon your life accept my call my call is upon your life my mandate is upon your life my mandate is upon your life that's what god is speaking my mandate is upon your life you cannot fight it it's an ordinance decided from heaven my mandate is upon your life light me lord Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle. Pastor Lawrence, speed, come. Where is where is your wife to be? Come, come, two of you. I see a grace for speed. Lift your hands. Enter that dimension now. I release that grace. Speed to your life. The Lord is taking away delay. Go and mark it. You are entering a strange level. I see you climbing a ladder. And the Lord is saying it's time for your glory. It's time for your glory. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Collect that child quickly from Kenny. Collect that child. Speed. That grace. Collect that child. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing that grace. A new dimension of speed. Coming upon your life. A new level of speed. Coming upon your life. A new level of speed. Hallelujah. Mm. Hey, Jimmy, I'm seeing something for you. I'm seeing, please stand up. I'm seeing a bottle of oil. And I'm seeing dollars, a bottle of oil and dollars. These two dimensions, the spirit and supernatural resources, that grace, the Lord is multiplying it. I'm seeing a bottle, a bottle of oil, a bottle of oil. The Lord is giving you a voice, not only in the area of finances, but a strange demonstration of the spirit. Please be patient. We are going to pray for the sick, but tonight I, I perceive God is doing something strange. Young man, come. Come. You and this guy, two of you, come stand. Step into a new dimension. New dimension. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. This guy, just lift your hands where you are. Come. Enter a new level in the spirit. I release that grace now upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at people and i'm seeing something rising from your stomach to your throat and the lord is saying is the spirit of prophecy 
Lord, I'm declaring right now. It's happening to people right now. It will come upon you like a mantle. Prophecy. 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 From your belly. From your belly. Prophecy. I command those rivers. Makato Sakata. Rivers of living water. Rivers. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady, come. You, come quickly. There is a grace. The call of God is upon your life. Enter that dimension of his grace. May the Lord give you visitations. 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 I bring you out of the cage that I see you in. I bring you out of the cage. I bring you out of the cage. I see you inside a cage. I bring you out of the cage. In the name of Jesus, by fire, I bring you out. I bring you out. Ancestry will not fight you. I bring you out of the cage. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are soon going to pray for the sick. Where's, where's your wife? Where is she? The Lord is saying the powers will fight no more. Come. The powers will fight no more. 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 There are ordinances fighting this family. I see it in the spirit. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus, victory is established. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus. And he's stepping to a new level of the prophetic that has always been there. In the name of Jesus Christ. This usher lady. Come. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will begin to see things before they happen. That's what the Lord is saying I should tell you. God is putting something in your eyes. You will see things. Shata sotosha. Marikatos kubariakata. You will see things before they happen. In the name of Jesus. With precision. With precision. And with accuracy. With precision. With precision. With precision. And with accuracy. Where are these people that just married? This lady in welfare. Where is she now? You and your wife. Where are they? She's not around. Stand up. Let me pray for you on her behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm praying for your mother. Let the Lord perfect her. But I'm praying for you. Something wants to take finances off your life. If I don't pray for you, I see great suffering in the days coming. It's like finance just dries up to the point that even your basic needs you cannot meet. But I cancel it right now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I cancel it right now. In the name of Jesus. This fair lady. An angel is pouring oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing right now. An angel is pouring oil on your head. Breakthrough. Step into a new dimension. Step into a new level. In the name of Jesus Christ. A new level. A new level. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wato. Where is she? Is she here? I'm seeing a flag being raised up and the Lord is saying it's a new season. I'm seeing a flag being raised up in the spirit. The Lord is announcing you. I'm declaring, let that anointing come upon you. A new season. Let that flag be raised. In the name of Jesus, let that flag be raised. You will never, never be down. Let that flag be raised. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're going to pray for the sick. Let's just flow. God, you know, sometimes this is, this lady, you, come. Yes. Say for my shame. Say it for my shame. I receive double. 
the Lord is taking me to a new level and I receive it I lay my hands upon you in the name of Jesus the grace for a new level is released upon you right now I command it so I declare it so in Jesus name I pray this gentleman you come confusion ends now in your life I lay my hands upon you I command confusion to end right now from your life in the name of Jesus confusion ends now over your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ confusion ends over your life in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm seeing I will, I will prophesy generally but I'm seeing a family having the breakthrough of a new car and an anointing I'm, 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 it may not look like it's necessary for you but I'm seeing an anointing locating that family now this is this is a, a blessing of a car you will stand and testify I don't care whether the resources are there or not I stretch my hands let that anointing make it happen in the name of Jesus Christ let that anointing by the Spirit make it happen right now help that person please let that anointing make it happen right now in the name of Jesus make it happen cameraman come I want to pray for you look at me it will surprise you the kind of favor you will start walking in Amen. you believe what I'm saying lift your hands father let this brother drink of the grace for favor a fresh dimension a fresh dimension a fresh dimension of favor in the name of Jesus Christ this lady you come the Lord is saying I'm rolling away reproach from your life everything that looks like reproach I lay my hands upon you I'm literally feeling like there are holes on your head and the anointing is going through I command reproach go and never return from her life in the name of Jesus Christ now we're going to pray for the sick please we're going to be very fast we're going to be very fast listen to me if you have any cancer related issue or barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i will want to pray for you by myself otherwise overflow one um, i'm in the main auditorium i want you to come out over all the overflows just come to the front stand up stand up come to the front of your projector stands quickly please come to the front of your projector stands for God's sake not to embarrass you but look at this woman's leg look at this look at this doctor look at this is this sickness look at how the whole leg is rotting already please quickly you're sick in your body come quickly stand if the people cannot move just keep them where they are or bring them close so that you don't um are we together now we're going to pray it will be very fast because our time is gone we want to finish on time the devil is a wicked person for these kinds of oppression are we together there are so many people in overflow tree and uh, God will grant grace pastor Lawrence come you will join them today when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you hallelujah father in the name of jesus by the corporate anointing we pray these people have come expecting to be healed expecting to be touched i pray that your anointing will visit them right now in the name of jesus overflow one overflow two overflow three let there be a release of the corporate grace right now in the name of jesus christ we're free now in the name of jesus christ what's wrong with you my dear Huh? fracture where how long where is the leg it can't move and your hand don't worry it's okay 
and your legs lord jesus please walk help this lady miracle, jesus. in the name of jesus walk my miracle here i release today. that anointing upon you right walk now my miracle, i correct your jesus. body now hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah please stretch your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit if they are still praying for you outside just just continue please if your request is yet to come here you can quickly wave it wave it and let the ushers have it and bring it here quickly stretch your hands stretch your hands by faith believing that god will visit you don't don't stretch your hands out of unbelief if there are requests here to come please let them come here quickly please bring them quickly unto you that answers prayers oh god shall all flesh come Rakato sodo brende ge barakato shabra diski labaria. Enda kato sata prakato jalabaria kato brende ge degodos. Please pray. You are praying in the spirit. You are connecting. Lord, we are believing that we will not have to write this again. Be serious about it. Make sure you are connected by faith. Shakato kaparakato barikata sipriada balarabash. Shakata parakata paroto subrias. Lord, arise in majesty arise in your power visit the case of people change impossible situations in the name of jesus christ lord let this be the last time they will write this in the name of jesus christ let this be the last time they will write this in the name of jesus let this be the last time. Shabakata pakata 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 pakata. Ende keto rakato shada pragada baladaba. Lord, we believe in you. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Shabakata parada baroto soto predegate. Legata kato prandegate preshada balade bosh. hallelujah 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 please respond with a resounding amen in the name of jesus amen. father this is not a ritual i stand on behalf of your people lord these requests represent different dimensions of demonic jerichos standing between them and the place of destiny father as I step upon this, let this be symbolic of the ark going around Jericho. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen. You're going to shout Jesus. We're going to shout Jesus seven times. Are we together? As a prophetic act over this. I'm going to guide you and you will shout it. For every one shout, let it represent one day going around Jericho. That at the seventh time we are agreeing together that no matter what the issue is if you don't believe you will never never see the salvation of god but for believers you'll be surprised father that you hearken to this prophetic act and oh god i stand leading your people as we shout that name the name of our high priest who has been exalted above the ironic priesthood above any kind of priesthood are you ready now I will call the number and you shout Jesus. Are you ready? Number one. Shake it by the super Number two. Crumbling every mountain. Number three. Shabakoto Sopataya. Macro Toba, I tell you, I feel the fire of God as we're shouting this Jesus. Number four. Jesus. Number five. Jesus. Number six. Jesus. I put an anointing on this seven shout. Let this be the shout that crumbles every mountain. In the name of Jesus, number seven. 
Que ta route I decree and declare unto you prepare for strange testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ some of you even before you get to your homes or where you came from you will meet it waiting for you like a messenger in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah please lift your hands let's take the prophecy and then we'll Every shame and reproach that has lingered in your life, shame and reproach, some of you is a pattern across your family members. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command shame and reproach be rolled over your life forever. Be rolled over your life forever. Be rolled over your life forever. hallelujah i release over your life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life hallelujah i decree and declare that every garment he saw joshua the high priest and he said to remove that garment every garment you are wearing that is attracting bad luck attracting all kinds of things the bible says to give them a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness i tear off that garment from your life i tear off that garment from your life garment of reproach i tear it off from your life i tear it off from your life in the name of jesus christ I decree and declare divine direction Lord what do I do where do I go to tonight by dreams and visions and strange encounters I provoke divine direction to come to your direction in the name of Jesus Christ master we have toiled all night but I prophesy to you go back this time around to the same place you failed I anoint you go and succeed. I anoint you go and succeed. I anoint you go and surpass the ordinary in the name of Jesus Christ. Every door that has refused to open, your parents tried it, refused to open. The Bible says, Lift up your heads, O ye gates and be ye lifted O ye not doors ancient doors i come against every ancient door and every gate swing open now in the name of jesus swing open now in the name of jesus swing open now in the name of jesus every helper that must arise tonight not tomorrow tonight every helper ordained by god to rise up and come to your aid i provoke favor towards you from them i provoke favor towards you from them i provoke favor towards you from them listen whoever has what it takes to help you in the name of jesus i direct their eyes to you I say it again whoever has what it takes to help you I direct their hearts to you the same mystery that bound Jonathan and David I declare wherever your helper is let it be as it were for Jonathan and David in the name of Jesus Christ all those in ministry here I prophesy to you a strange unction upon the work on your hands step into a new direction step into a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ every family here that has cried that's all you've known to do cry and cry and say when will God deliver us I declare 
that your weeping has endured enough i prophesy your morning comes and with it joy in the name of jesus christ those writing exams let the mercy of god the mercy that helped those who went before you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you hallelujah there are people here you are sensing that your spiritual life is dry it's not like you don't love god but revelations they don't come as they used to come again sometimes you open your bible you cannot even read to pray you are sensing something is wrong it's like you know your spiritual life is under attack in the name of jesus christ i launch you to the new a new insight a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter the lord will open your eyes to not only listen to teachings but to get the spirit of the message there are some of us the devil has cheated us by allowing our prayer altar go down in the name of jesus tonight let fire from heaven fall upon your prayer life let the quickening of the spirit fall upon your prayer life every wrong friend in your life whether you want them to go or not in the name of jesus for the sake of god's hand upon your life i separate you with them forever this night i separate you with them forever time wasters destiny wasters I cause a separation between you and them forever we're rounding up some of us here are plagued with the spirit of laziness spiritual laziness mental laziness physical laziness the bible says a lazy hand a slothful hand will that a one that deals with a slothful hand will beg he will become poor i decree and declare the spirit of productive diligence not just diligence the spirit of productive diligence i release it upon you right now are you ready to receive favor i will continue to pray favor upon your life until it works i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ even if you have seen favor in your life by the grace of god i release you to a new order of favor a new order of favor a new order of favor favor is not when you have money favor is when men arise by god to meet your needs if you have money and men don't come to your life you are not favored you are only prosperous you are not favored favor is when men arise that before you call they come they don't come and go they come and stay until the purposes of god have been achieved i call them now from the east the west the north and the south help us of your destiny may they appear before you in the name of jesus christ I don't know what personal request you desire from God but I release my faith with you and I declare that by miracle service may you will only return rejoicing over that issue in the name of Jesus Christ anyone here trusting God for a good job not just a job that you look like a slave a job with honor in the name of Jesus I agree with you between now and next miracle service may god bless you with a job that will launch you to a new dimension everyone in business here the god factor the favor factor the help factor the ebenezer factor i release it upon your business i release it upon your field of endeavor in the name of jesus christ the Bible says where thou hast been rejected so that no man will pass through you it says I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I decree and declare may your gates be continually open 
now i want to pray a prayer that may be very strange for some of us i want to pray that somebody will give you money listen hold on listen we are not money mongers this is not some carnal thing there are some of you this is what you need you don't need advice you don't need counseling you just need help straight help i pray for you you will be surprised it will look like a dream i pray for you not a helper not access thank god for it but a helper that will come with the financial resource to help you i stretch my hands and i release it upon you in the name of jesus christ the anointing for miracles help that guy the anointing for signs the anointing for wonders whether you are called in ministry or not in the name of jesus may you carry it in your spirit from today begin to reproduce a new order of signs and wonders and finally i pray for you whatever needs to be done for your family members to rejoice in the lord between now and the next 30 days whatever needs to be shaken whatever needs to be overturned in the name of jesus christ joy for your family members joy to your family members in the name of jesus christ let it be so in the name of jesus christ and for every for every worker here in the name of jesus christ after tonight rise with a new level of evidence become a testament not just a testament of a believer in christ but a testament that you belong to this spiritual family the grace to prove it let it be released upon you in the name of jesus whoever fights you may he find himself fighting himself whoever fights your family may they fight themselves they will point the knife at you and hurt themselves in the name of jesus christ hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.